Hello everyone, uh, I'm Joey B. And I'm Charlie Garcia. <laughs> Welcome to Cooking with Joey B featuring Charlie Garcia. Tonight we are making holiday ham. Yes, it, it's a whole ham. We are matching. It wasn't really intended, but here we are. And um, let us know if you can hear us. The audio quality is going to be slightly meh, but whatever. Um, yeah, so we're here to do this. There's one other thing that we're here to do too. Um, for like the last month and a half, I have been thinking it's probably time for me to get my L3. And Charlie, being the person that he is, uh, greatly encouraged that. So, what we're doing tonight is a little special. <laughs> and it's a little arts and craftsy. Here I have, Charlie, can you hold this sure, up? Sure, sure. And uh, I'll zoom in. So, right here, hold on, I have to get this working. Right here we have... Uh, something that represents the funding for a L3 rocket that uh, is in the works for BPS.space. And the deal with this is that for every amount of Super Chat that we hit, and we actually have not yet determined the amount, for every amount of Super Chat that we hit, we will roll over, I will head to the computer, and I will purchase something. So we have a nose cone, we have a telemetrum, a, a piston to eject parachutes, the actual parachutes, a motor case, and finally the rocket motor. And these are all in order of uh, least to most expensive. And when I say most, an end motor does not cost $20. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, Estes, yes, the, it doesn't scale very well. But yeah, it's really exciting. Hoping to fly early next year. Um, and that's why, what we're doing today is mostly just cooking and having some fun. So we need to come up with a good goal. Can, can we crowdsource the amount that we should hit? I support all of my friends making dubious fiscal choices in support of their rocket hobby. <laughs> uh, but sure, <laughs> oh, chat's already on the ball. Okay, so we have $3 so far from I'm Not Look and Arsenio Dev. Get you some telemetry or cloves for your ham. I don't know what cloves are for the ham. It's a spice. Oh, okay. I get, Okay, I know what those kind of cloves are. So, um, what do we think? Maybe every $15, every $20, every cumulative $20, I will buy a new thing? I don't know. Is th does this work? It is unclear. Operators are standing by on the telephone to take your rocket parts now. Oh, it's going to happen. All right, so we're going to set it at $20. And when it happens, uh, I'll have Charlie color it in to where we need to go. Um, and there are one or two things that I will have to just like put in a cart, but I will still commit to purchasing them. So we have, okay, a lot. Um, we have five, three, five eight. Five sixty-nine. Oh God, <laughs> cents. <laughs> what is math? Oh boy. Um, well, okay, so what we're actually gonna go off well, all right, here, you hold this. It's, oh, okay. I, I'm gonna have to buy the nose cone. Let's just do it now, because it's obviously gonna happen. Well, is this the nose cone, or is this the nose cone and the body tubes? Those are all from the same place. Uh, let's just do the nose cone first, and then we'll write on the body tubes, right? So, up first, we have the 5.5 .5 to one four inch Von Karman nose cone. There you go. We're gonna say we reached it. I'm gonna put one here for uh, tubes. Tube. That is that is definitely how tube is spelled. <laughs> that one hundred percent. Okay, um, and where am I going, Charlie? Uh, Mad Cow Rocketry. Hey, I I support all my friends making bad life choices. We should probably start some food before we get too far into this this I telephone. I think what we're gonna do is instead of me trying to do. Otherwise, I might eat you instead. Okay, that seems uh, that's not on the critical path. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm gonna just open up tabs to represent purchasing these things and then we will actually like get it done later because I don't think we're moving fast enough on the food. <laughs> uh, well, okay, and nobody tube yet. We only hit the nose cone. So so Joe is Joe, do you wanna tell him about uh, the rocket you're gonna build while I start on some food? Yes. And absolutely. we can stay true to form where you talk and I cook. <laughs> yeah, this is great. So um, the rocket is yet unnamed and we're not, are we letting the internet name another rocket? This seems dangerous. Ooh, I had not thought about that. 
up until now. Let's let's think more on that and not make a commitment yet. Um, the rocket is yet unnamed, and it will be flown at the Friends of Amateur Rocketry test site in Mojave. Um, and where, how high are we going? Uh, you're going with the end motor? Yeah. So 20, 25,000 feet. Okay. Um, we haven't, like, <laughs> there's work to be done. Like, the open rocket is non-existent. Um, but the parts are mostly selected. So it's an N1100 motor uh, moon burner from CTI, and it goes for 11 and a half-ish to 12 seconds. Um, Which is a stupid long burn for a high-powered rocket. Like, yeah. That's... That's crazy. Stupid long, but it should be pretty pretty fun. We're gonna stick a ton of cameras on it. Um, I've got a bunch you, of those run cameras. You. Uh, yes, I will. Sorry, Charlie's not. Charlie did, okay, he, he has funded this in some way. Hold on. Just so it's clear that this is happening, Charlie's Christmas gift to me was this beautiful set of fins that he made. Um, well, the, the, the bands are from Binder Design. Okay, right. But the fins are entirely custom, um, or at least custom made. Yeah. So he labeled it, it's got a serial number and everything. We are all set with the fins, and uh, obviously they need to be more rigidly mounted. But a few bolts left to tighten. Right. Um, okay, what else? So there's that. There's. Um, it's going to fly with a telemetrum. Right? Yep. Yeah, telemetrum as the, I think, probably primary. Um, it depends when this flies, but Ava will not yet have enough flight time to qualify it as a primary, like, control computer. So the telemetrum will fly as primary um, for shoot charges, and then Ava will fly as a backup. Um, and Ava will probably broadcast telemetry from it as well. Also, there's a reaction wheel on there. And show this. This is a super fancy outrunner. Just fancy is the best word to describe this thing. Yeah, it's a super low KV, so it's real torquey, um, kind of low speed um, motor, and it's got a nice 40 amp ESC to run it. Um, yeah. Yeah, and so like all of the load rides on this awesome bearing. It's gonna be really cool, and so we should have a decent degree of roll control on the way up, which means the cameras will be a lot more happy. Um, and what else? You're doing the live? Hmm? Are you committing to the, the run cam feature upgrade? Oh, maybe. Um, it's easy to pull the signal out of the run cams. Oh, Charlie, uh-oh. What? Damage report. <laughs> We're making the rocket. <laughs> oh, uh oh. <laughs> what did I miss? I, I, uh, we, we made all the money. We will need to almost certainly purchase all of the parts. So, <laughs> I mean, not like the money itself, but by the way that the stream was supposed to work. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to read off everyone's name, um, but this is a considerable amount of super chatting, especially to Jay Hines. Let me read these off. Um, Charlie is doing potatoes, right? Uh, well, I think I have to go scribble in some, some, uh, blue, oh. blue Sharpie. Okay. Some, like, read off names. Yeah, would you like that? Uh, where's or... the blue Sharpie? Where did we, where did we put the... Oh, jeez, this is a mess. Um, I'm the, the, uh, game show host with the... I have a black Sharpie, but that's not really... There was a blue Sharpie just a minute ago. Did I, did I lose it? Oh boy. That feels like a thing I would do. <laughs> um, okay, stand by. It's not here. This, this rocket's gonna go great. There's nothing that could possibly go wrong with this flight. With right. this level of... You know what, we, we need to eat. Let's, just, let's yeah. use the black Sharpie. And, okay. And there, yeah, there this we go. This is for okay. you, sir. Right, go for it. And then as you're doing it, I'm gonna read off the name. Or, you're, you can read off the names and then I'll, oh, I'll, okay. I will thank them profusely. Uh, I'm gonna have to start scrolling. So okay. Are we going fine. all the way to the top? Um, yeah, just use the the like this view right here. Okay. Uh, I'm not a lock for one dollar. Uh, Arsenio Dev for two dollars. Thank you, Arsenio. Uh, it's Rocket Science for five dollars. Wow! Thank you, it's Rocket Science. 
Charles O'Connor for five sixty nine. Charles, very generous. Thank you very much. I'm I'm a little peeved. Those those cents are going to be hard to keep track of on my scribbling here. Oh boy, with my All really right. scientific. Give, give him just one line. <laughs> he needs he needs a line. Uh, Wes for five dollars. Okay, that's Wes and Charles. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Wes. Nathan Smith for twenty dollars. Nathan, that's, that's like four scribbles. Woo, Nathan, that that was an entire thing right there. Wait, hold on. Nathan's We're, thing gets us up to telemetrum easy. Yeah, I realized that I was underestimating. So, so what we said it was twenty dollars to the tube, and then to telemetrum. So we're up to there. <laughs> you know, I, I think I think I should have should have written a, a little little Excel spreadsheet. Um, oh boy, Jay Hines uh, for a hundred dollars, which I oh. think just takes us off the top of the chart. Well, let's let's bring them all the way up to halfway above parachute, and then we'll everyone else can can be up there. <laughs> Charlie, you're a great game show host. If the rocket stuff doesn't work out, this is a good career path for you. All right. Well, <laughs> at least it's already in LA, right? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Greg uh, Deville with uh, fifty dollars. Greg, thank you, dude. Greg is the builder of some beautiful circuit boards. I can tell you that. Uh, JR Craft for two dollars. Thank what you, JR. Will fly first, my Aerospike or your L3, Joe? Your oh, opinion? Um, probably his Aerospike. And uh, Lauren Potterick for five dollars. Thanks, Lauren. Wow. Well, we did it, folks. Now, as a reminder, every single one of these photos is absolutely accurate. This is not the Hermes nose cone. That's a. That's the actual telemetrum. That's my rocket right there. Those are not low-key cases, they're definitely CTI, and that is absolutely a CTI motor. So, thank you very much for the contributions, that was wholly unexpected. Um, sorry, here we go. I think, I think the thing to do is we should set the, the booster with the, the fins behind this, just for the rest of the stream. And yeah. then cook some potatoes! A novel idea! Um, yeah, a novel idea for a cooking stream. <laughs> also, try not to get fiberglass in your hand. Yeah, that's so. So, Joe, my dear friend. Yes. Why don't you wash that last potato while I prognosticate to the stream? Okay. Pro Joe, please prognosticate. Joe, um, this is Joe's first composite airframe rocket, which we're all very excited about. But he's about to learn one of the foundational rules of working with composites, which is for the love of God, don't touch the edge, you get splinters! <laughs> Any fiberglass, carbon fiber, Kevlar part, all the composite parts are just asking to give you splinters. So, so you, you carefully pick them up on the, the long edge of the fiber, and then your hands are happy and up splinter free. Um, I say that as if my hands are splinter free. I'm like probably 3% carbon fiber by mass, just from like <laughs> splinters in my, in my uh, hands. Um, okay, so we have to peel the potatoes, okay. and rumor has it, Joe, have you ever peeled a potato before? I've never peeled a potato. Everyone, I know this is surprising. Joey B, Rocket Carbonation Boy, Milkman 2000 has never peeled a potato. So, so this is going to be an <laughs> educational experience for Joe. And we got um, two peelers. Need, yeah, we need, uh, I need a scissors. Do you have a scissors? I have a Leatherman because oh, I am wow. an engineer okay. yeah. with no sense of fashion. And I'm going to take a little bit. I feel like I'm obligated to take offense at that since we're essentially wearing the same thing. Um. No comment. <laughs> it is okay to have no sense of fashion if your rockets fly really well. It, it actually makes up for it. Oh, all right, all right. Uh, thank you, I'm glad for the dispensation. Okay, here we go. Make sure to walk around the kitchen with the pointy end of the knife pointed out towards the others in your vicinity. That's the safety way to do it. Okay, so, so the, there's two bags prepared here for the the highly technical process of potato peeling. Okay. Um, so, so you've got a potato peeler, and then a potato, and your goal is to peel the potato. Hold on, you're not. You're not, not your fingertips. Oh, is yeah. that not, not the camera? Other Let me camera. Get you in the guy with the thing and the guy. There we go. Right. So, so the goal is you have the potato peeler and the potato, and we're trying to peel the potato, not the fingers. Which is a bit of a process. Right. So you, you like hold the potato. Hold on. 
this camera uh, will overheat if you don't extend all of the extremities <laughs> of it. As ridiculous as that is, it actually does help. Con configuring the camera for uh, <laughs> for stream. Okay. Uh, so you like get your hand generally away from the potato part that you're going to be like peeling, mm -hmm. and then you just like track the surface of the potato. Hey. That's pretty cool. And like you start and you're not about to like chop your fingers off. But as you get into a rhythm, it's really easy to get enthusiastic and like amputate at least an appreciable fraction of skin from one of your fingertips. Skin retention is on the critical path. <laughs> That's almost what critical path means. <laughs> I've been trying for months to figure out what critical path means and I just continue to use it in uh, conversation with Charlie and each time I do I get feedback on whether I did it right. So far it's mostly wrong. <laughs> this is like one of the more involved like cooking activities we've done on a stream I think. Like, well, it's better, it's, it's, I don't know, I like it. So the other thing we have to do, and really probably we should have started here, would you care to explain our, our alcohol for the evening? Oh, um, so if you've ever been in college, well, hold on, maybe let's we'll start again. Um, if you've ever really wanted, um, okay, you know how, Charlie, let me, let me ask you this. Have you ever had a hangover and you're like, wow, this isn't bad enough. I wish I had had a ton of sugar as well the night before. Have you ever felt that way? Of course you have. So the solution to this was created, uh, the solution to this was created by the, um, I don't know if it's branded, it, the Fireball Company of Fireball Whiskey. And so we bought apple cider and Fireball, and uh, that's the plan for tonight. And it's like an appreciable amount. So we will, um, that's that. Okay, so I this feel, is- I feel a little bit of a social contract after the support for your rocket to consume an appreciable quantity of it. <laughs> like, that, that's what they're here for. Charlie also has to spend a lot of time in a car tomorrow, so we want to make sure he doesn't end up like too nauseous and miserable during that process. But. We do have um, sugar infused with alcohol. So where does this go now? Uh, I hadn't thought that far ahead. <laughs> um, it, perhaps a plate. That seems like an idea. That seems how science works. Do be like this. Okay, so this is gonna go by you. I'm also gonna turn the camera so that you can see the side of us. It's like a little bit more engaging. Like that. How's the uh, stream doing? Oh my gosh, Charlie. What? We are, uh, we're kind of killing it on the Super Chats here. Thank you everyone so much. Um, we will do another Super Chat readout in a, in a momentarily, but uh, for now we must peel some potatoes. So, the uh, rocket that we're going to get all these parts for, uh, what is the purpose of this? Do we already do oh, yeah. that? Let, yeah, let's do it. So, I don't know, you can do things in secrecy and like, that's all fun and games, but it's more fun if people know what you're working toward. So, um, it hasn't been like a formal announcement or anything, but the goal of doing the L3 is all in service of eventually doing a space shot for BPS.space. And so space shots are really, really hard and they are really, really expensive. I think some people in the chat have some experience with that. There is at least one person uh, who has super chatted who has experience with going to space. That's correct. But um, yes, they're very, very hard. They're very, very expensive. They often, if not usually, do not work. Um, and it's just a really fun thing to try. And it's BPS has reached a point where like, I'm doing a lot of fun projects at the small scale, but tracking a rocket up to 30 meters is becoming not that hard, and hard problems are fun to solve. So anyway, the L3 is in service of me getting my feet wet with high power rocketry, and ideally, with this and a good number of other high power flights later this year, um, we can aim for a space shot. Right now I'm thinking probably 2022. Um, if we're, I don't know. Is, do that, think is that Elon time? Is that, uh, Peter Beck time? That feels Is like that Peter Beck time. Gwen time? 
Uh, Gwen time is unattainable by most people <laughs> in terms of like the sense that it requires. Um, anyway, what are your thoughts on this, Charlie? Uh, well, what's your what's your propulsion plan for the space shot? The propulsion plan is to copy Princeton's plan, um, which is, I mean, I don't think they have IP on this, but like... Well, no, they, they were copying a, a Super Arca from the 50s. Okay. Um, I have lots of research to do, I will tell you. Like, it's ultra early stages of like, well, I know I want to do this, but there's nothing is locked in. So the goal is to do a uh, two-stage approach where the second stage is... Do you call it DART if it's powered? No, it's just a second stage. Boosted DART is if the second stage is unpowered, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's two-stage. I don't actually know the motors off the top of my head. Um, and that's the plan. And then the plan is to go to space and then come back. <laughs> that's, that's usually how it goes. Right. What, comes, what goes up? Um, OK, so we need a chopping board so we can Oh, uh, right in here. There you go. Is this one? Yeah. There we go. Okay. So the first step is keeping our fingers during the peeling process. Now we have to keep them during the chopping process. Oh boy. Okay. Hold on. This feels like the appropriate knife to use. Nice. It honestly, I will tell you that one is not that sharp. Um, like it's, it will cut potatoes fine. But. Right, but it, it has the correct, well I actually can see exactly how dull this is. I don't know if the chat can see this, but you could like... It's not great. There's a, a surface finish defect. I have a nice whetstone that on, my dad got On the got edge. Me. Um, I have a nice whetstone that he got me. But this, this has the appropriate level of heft. Yeah. To like, I don't know, whack a potato. Oh my god. Eye protection. Um, <laughs> Safety third. Okay, this these potatoes are done, and now I'm going to read off some other super chats, I think, and I'll let you chop those for a minute. That feels a little ominous, like reading the names of your like super chat gracious contributors <laughs> while there's like a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for for every for every um super chat that I read, I need I need a really big chop. All right, are we going to do this? We can do this. All right. Ready? So, uh, the last one we read was Lauren, right? Or, yeah. no, J.R. Craft, and then I don't know if we read Sean, so let's start with Sean. Sean Omen, who says, remember everyone, drink water and take a few deep breaths. Everything is going to be okay, and I'm so proud of you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Um, Quentin Troll says, blue Sharpie back pocket. Oh! <laughs> Not for me, is it for you? Yep. <laughs> Thank you so much, Quentin. All right. Um, Daniel Dides says, back left pocket. Uh, thank you, Daniel. I'm not look says, nothing and donates $1. Thank you. John Bird donates $1 and says nothing. Delta Space Systems donates $2 and says nothing. And then John Bird finally says, uh, hi, Joe. How do you feel about being a, in a video with Charlie Sheen? Email me if you want to find out more. John, thank you so much for the offer. There is your chop. Um, most of my projects... It, I am very confused by the, by the proposition there. That's what I will say. But Charlie Sheen is a person. Are you telling me there's another Charlie Joe? Charlie Sheen? No, no. Are you telling me that you, you're thinking about it being in a video with another Charlie? <laughs> I could never be in a video with another Charlie. I could not. I could never do that to you. Um, all right. So I'll read some of the other chats here. Yeah, everyone is mad about Charlie's left back pocket. I imagine this is one of the things that we'll watch back, and it'll be painfully obvious what was going on. <laughs> okay. This yeah. potato made an escape. That's okay. He can he can put it in the trash now. Tell Charlie not to cut his finger off. Um, Hey Joe, have you launched Scout for the second flight yet? I have not, but here it is. I don't know if rockets really belong in the kitchen, but Scout is chilling, doing real well. And uh, it needs a couple of upgrades. We need a GPS upgrade, we need some software upgrades, and then I need a flight date that isn't cold. Hold the new airframe. 
Oh, yeah. I don't know when the new airframe will be put to use, but Charlie, basically this year has been very good Christmas-wise for gifts from Mr. Garcia here. Well, that was supposed to be sent months ago. That's okay. That's, it's a little late. That's okay. So I told Charlie that I was making Scout a while ago. And then he was like, you know what you should do, Joe? You should make it out of a fiberglass airframe. And I was like, huh, that's kind of a cool idea. But I don't really know how to do that, and I don't really have time, and I know the cardboard will work fine. So he said, screw it, I'll do it. I'm Charlie Garcia, I build things. And that is what he did. So <laughs> the problem is that he did this, it's this beautiful, like, 80-gram fiberglass airframe. It's just, like, how many layers is it? Uh, three. Three layers. Um, it should be much stronger than the cardboard airframe and lighter, uh, or like almost entirely the same. It's 84 grams, so... It's, it's very light. Yeah, it's appreciably light. Um, the problem is that we can't get it off the mandrel. This is not there's, the... There's a way to fix that if I'm just not lazy and I make a second one. <laughs> I, I was dumb, and it's not a tapered mandrel. So it's... I have a I have a very lightweight rocket frame attached to an incredibly heavyweight mandrel, um, and I'm thinking now maybe this is sprint version two because um, lightweight fiberglass and really good against loading uh, is great for sprint p two. Um, okay, I should probably help cook. It would be a novel idea if we were planning on eating sometime tonight. Would be good. All right, so, actually, you know what you should do? The oh, cider. Yeah, we haven't done any alcohol. And, and the fire, wait, where's the cider? I put it in the fridge because we almost uh, uh, left it out for like six hours. Um, okay, so, cider and fireball. So and the, the trick to this, I think, is you put it in a coffee mug and you microwave it for 60 seconds. I and just it's hot cider with fireball. What I want to do here is just demonstrate the quality of this here product. This thing is plastic. <laughs> they want to know if you will uh, offer the files for the new landing legs. Hmm, I think that would be a good idea. That would um, be, th that's a cool landing light design. Charlie and I were talking about this thing like right before the stream started about, um, well, I don't know how much is appropriate to say, but basically I need someone to help with um, some of the business side of BPS. And so like, I've got all of these things that could be released or put out into the world and that would be, I think, helpful or good products and I am really bad, like I'm, I made Signal as a product, but I'm really bad at making products. So I need some help on that, but I would like to release them. And like, that just requires lots of instructions and a lot of setup. So Charlie, um, can I offer you, uh, let me offer you a selection of mugs here. We have the Mars 2020, we have, which is landing in February, right? Yeah. Um, that's, that's soon. This is a town in New York, so not as exciting necessarily for space reasons. We have the, it is rocket science mug, and we have the BPS mug. Oh, and you know what? I know what we should do. So I got these mugs. They aren't sold. They're heat activated mugs, um, but they aren't sold, again, because I'm bad at products. Because if we're microwaving stuff, we have to use the heat changing All right, we'll use the heat no, There's no choice in the matter. Like, I'm sorry to take away your free will, but, but it has to be done. So there are two versions because um, I experimented with two different things. You'll see it, it's really cool. So this is the, they aren't for sale, but if enough people like them, we'll put them up for, for sale. So it's totally matte black around the edge. And then, what do I do? I, I do cider and then fireball? Yeah, I, I, I would suggest a mixture ratio, but I think it's just to taste. I'm gonna... I have a shot glass. Let's do this. Oh, wait! I have a BPS shot glass. 
Someone made me one of these. So Eric, uh, Eric Spittle in the Discord, um, and like one of the most wonderful patrons ever, made this beautiful shot glass. Charlie, would you mind holding it up and I'll zoom in on it? He made these beautiful shot glasses, and they say BPS if you rotate it there. BPS.space. So we will use that now. <laughs> I don't know if we're ever going to have any dinner ready on this stream. It, we're not trending in the right direction. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's a fair, fair statement. All right. There we go. One. Oh. That smells like fireball. Yep. Can't yes, confirm. <laughs> I wonder what the ISP of cinnamon is. Um, isn't Lauren doing a pumpkin spice rocket? That Someone's feels like something that. we need to know. Is there a pumpkin spice rocket happening that- It's her or it's maybe James or I don't know. Uh, someone is doing a pumpkin spice rocket. Or there's a there's someone in the Discord too who's doing one. I'm gonna give us each two shots, Charlie. I feel like- Oh boy, all right. <laughs> I feel like we've, we owe it to the- uh, to the entertaining factor of the stream. This also is an incentive to get um, dinner made so that there are other things in our stomach. <laughs> there are there are time constraints on that. My hands are already sticky from fireball. Or potato. No, it's definitely fireball. I wash my hands after I <laughs> It's the sugar. Alright. Oh, I'm throwing potato everywhere. All right, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna microwave these, and then we will. Uh, Can you start preheating the oven yeah. to 325? I've got the ham. Yeah. 325. Yeah. So we're we're building this stream as cooking a full ham. We went. <laughs> okay, so we went to the grocery store. And we didn't really think it through. Charlie said, what if we made a holiday ham? And I was like, oh my god, what a great idea. And that was the extent of the thought process. And so... Detailed plans. Detailed plans. And so we went to the grocery store, and we asked the woman at the counter, we were like, we would like a ham. And she seemed... She was very confused. She was like, you want a whole one? Because they're kind of big. And then we got like a half ham. I'll show you the ham. <laughs> Check out this ham. It's a holiday ham, because it's in December. <laughs> so we're, we're going to do a, a honey, maple syrup, and brown sugar glaze, which I guess is our excuse for not having dessert tonight. Um, so I guess that'll be your next job, because we're about to pour water on the potatoes and start them boiling. So it'll be so ham, mashed potatoes, green bean with bacon, and dinner rolls. Right. You're doing the rolls, I think. Yep. Um, I do the ham. We so we, we tried to buy like dinner roll dough so we could let it rise, and then I accidentally ended up buying like way less tasty dinner rolls. So there, the odds of like dinner roll failure are high. Okay. We we may have to show that that cutscene um, eventually. Oh wait, yeah. Okay. When you're done, uh, when that's done, you can take it out, and I'm gonna um, do a cutscene. I think you already airdropped it. You just have to load it in. Oh, that's right. Okay. Um, so we cut up four potatoes, five potatoes. Sorry. We peeled five potatoes, but I only think that's going to be enough. Sorry, say that again. I cut to the bathroom by accident. <laughs> uh, we cut up, we peeled five potatoes and cut up four, and I think that's frankly filling this pot. So okay. You can now debut the, uh, the mug. Oh, all right. Okay. And, and the reason we made two is that they go in both directions, um, depending on the mug. So we like tried to keep it flexible about what it would be. Um, this smells actually really good, despite being an appreciable fraction fireball. <laughs> okay. And this mug looks really cool. Like, look at the yeah. handle. Here, let's get it. Nice and close there. Uh, you're braver than me. I would not put my hand under this. This feels like it could spill and be hot. Okay, and then show, show the, uh, the side. Oh, okay. Oh, this is back gonna up, spill. Just a, back up, just there is a 100% chance of spilling. 
And so it's heat activated. So as the coffee or whatever you have in there goes down, you start like wiping things away. And as you pour it in, it goes back up. So the microwave sort of diminishes the effect. I like need one of your TBC mounts just to hold this level enough so I don't okay, spill you it. Can, you, can, you can put it back down now. You're okay, a... What I need to do is take a sip. Okay, we're gonna do media source. Ooh, that's very hot. Okay, warm, warm, warm. Sorry, I went, I went kind of ham with the, uh, with the microwave. Can we Yeah, that would be great. Uh, uh, how long? Let's do a minute 30. And I'm gonna cue up the cutscene now, I think. So we filmed this segment earlier today. Please enjoy. Okay, the odds of this boiling over are really actually high. Um, yeah, we have a lot of potatoes in a s small pot. I hope you enjoyed this segment, by the way. We worked very hard on it. Um, by we, Joe means that he worked very hard while I, like, stared at a whiteboard. Well, you sketched out the L3 flight profile. Okay, so this mug is a little different. Oh, yeah. All right, that's pretty good. That's very good. Um, this mug, if I can do it this way. This is a dangerous game. Boom! So, RP1 loading underway, locks loading underway, loading complete, locks load complete. So does it like go complete. up as, it, as you heat it more? Well, so this is the question, is what is the right way to do these mugs? Should it, should it go from the top to the bottom or from the bottom to the top? You know what I mean? Oh, like, so mine, goes, mine goes from the bottom to the top, and I think that's better. Right? But is it? Do you want it to look cool when you fill it up with coffee, or do you want it to look cool as it goes down? Oh, like you know, don't talk to me. I haven't had my caffeine yet. Like yeah, it's one of those. And so yeah. as we go down, you'll like see it go back to black. Hmm. I don't know. That's that's a hard question. It is unclear. That's a philosophical truth of the universe. Um, as time progresses, I get more worried about this meal. So what should I do right now? Um. Is this heating? Is this camera going to be okay? Yeah, that feels heating. Uh, okay, so that's the mashed potatoes. There's a solid chance this overhead camera's going to die. Is oven on? Yes. So we need to get the ham on a platter. Cool. Can we use one of these metal things? Yes. Uh, and we need to cover it with aluminum foil. Aluminum. Yeah, al aluminum. You Don't mind me, I'm just throwing things on the floor. Alright. Because we're engineers and we plan ahead, we have written out the meal plan. Nice. And we are uh, an hour and five minutes behind schedule. I mean, isn't how? Yeah, I feel like this was supposed to be like the first fifteen minutes of the broadcast, and we're definitely about. All right. Well, we got we got the the make booze complete. 
potatoes peeled and chopped. Okay, Charlie, feel this feel this section of the counter. That's all fireball. <laughs> that's like that's how sticky so and sugary sugar. it is. All right. Uh, okay, boiled potato. Uh, we can't really check that off yet. Potato is not boiled. I'm ham in oven. The ham is not in the oven. I'm the ham man. The ham's getting there. It's not there yet. Um, I don't. So the problem is that neither of us have dealt with a ham. And that's the problem. Nothing could possibly go wrong with this plan. We did, there's there's no failure modes associated with trying to cook a ham for the first time on a live stream. Has anyone ever cooked a ham in the chat? It smells like ham. Is ham safe to eat raw? I feel like no. That should be pre-cooked, I think. It's smoked. Yeah, so that, should be, that should be safe. Like, that's like sandwich ham, I think, right? Okay. Made with pure, keep refrigerated. Uh, protect. Oh, here we go. Here's the money. Experience delicious combination of flavors. Boar's head, maple, and place honey coat ham is made with pure maple syrup, golden, whatever. Um, Oh, it just doesn't say that it's cooked. I guess you're supposed to know. Well, we're going to cook it either way. If you said it should be like 45 minutes per pound. Or yeah, uh, no, 15 minutes per pound. There's three pounds of ham. So, 45. Yeah. Now, now, the one thing they teach you in Boy Scouts is to always cut toward yourself, right? Right, yeah, and I remember it's... that lesson specifically during the totem ship safety training. That's right. So. Uh, that way, if you slip, you amputate your finger, and you know not to use a knife again because it's, you're, you're, it's, it's Darwinian at work. It's about building character. Can you see the ham in the stream? I just wanted to make sure we can all see this beautiful ham. This Christmas holiday meat slab. Is that a slab? That feels like a uh, like a dome. Like I'm, I'm getting dome vibes from that piece of ham. Okay, so now <laughs> this is going very poorly. I would go. I would go pink side down. Okay, I need to wash my hands. Got ham all over. Smoked ham is okay to eat. You know what I would like? And I really do think I would like it. Uh, if anyone is very bored and wanted to compile over the entirety of this stream at the end of it, just a supercut of all of the times we say the word ham, <laughs> I think that would be wonderful. Um, would, that would make my day. Uh, okay, well, let's put some of the glaze on before we put it in the oven. We should probably just put it in the oven now. I think we just need to get this ham working. This 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 is going to end badly. Yeah. Can we can we focus up on that? Yeah. That, um, that go to like the a... for future reference. It's just uh, under here. If you click. Uh, both can't. Oh, we are on that. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. We're good. This this right here, you guys can't tell, but the like, the the liquid level is like not quite one index finger below the top of the. Charlie, what do you think the glass transition temperature of this material is, and what do you think its sensitivity to proximity to heat is? <laughs> oh, are you talking about the uh, the bag? The very thin plastic bag right next well, to the. It's very polyethylene, so it's probably like two hundred C. We can breathe a little ethylene as a treat. Um, you know, we're just gonna not, actually. So, I'm gonna check the chat about the ham, just to, just in case someone has advice. Okay, Joe, it's cooked, says Brian. Thanks, Brian. Has Charlie uploaded any videos lately? I haven't gotten any notification. Charlie is uh, killing it behind the scenes, and thus Adobe Premiere has been Difficult to reach for him. Um, I, I feel I, I feel shame. It's okay. No, I understand. There's no shame. Uh, it's pre-cooked, so just heat it up so many minutes per second. Everyone says it um, is heated up. On the instructions for the ham, there should be cooking time by weight and temperature. Use the foil tightly. Oh, the foil! Forgot about the foil. No, we didn't forget about the foil. It's right well, on the list. Okay, I, I forgot about it. Um, it's not in the oven yet. I don't think we've, we've missed that ship yet. Well, I'm going to look up images of raw ham. <laughs> this, this, this feels like an interesting stream activity. Oh, this is... 
Is that raw? Yeah, it's like a lot lighter in color than our ham. Yeah, we have we have dark ham. Oh yeah, catastrophic failure imminent. Oh. It's happening. Usually, I'll go down to like yeah, like seven or eight is great, and we'll keep it mostly boiling. So, this is this is going to make a mess. Charlie, we put aluminum foil over the ham, right? Yes. Okay. The odds of this being a mess are, are 100%. And it's fine. What's the point of uh, having a house if you don't have to move out of it because you make a mess during your somewhat boozy live stream? That's definitely what this is supposed to be. That's, that's absolutely the plan. Okay, does this look right? <laughs> this is such a ridiculous thing to eat. Why? Like, it's, it is good, but... Such a silly way to prep it. Let's just do it. Yeah. Hey, sure. I think the worst thing that happens is that we have to order takeout or something, but I don't think it's going to be. So you guys have heard of the fuel dome and the lox dome and the common dome, but what we have here on stream is the ham dome. Ham dome! (laughs) Put it back in the oven. I knew it wouldn't be too hot to pick out. All right, I just had to go for it. I'm gonna address some more super chats here. So, Matthew M says, good luck on the L3 and donates $5. Thank you, Matthew. Neutronium 95 with $5, commercial or experimental motors for the space shot? Great question. I think the, the initial plan is commercial. The 5040 is a uh, certified load now, so that'll be all commercial. And um, there's still just like a ton of stuff in flux, but like I know USC RPL makes their own motors, and certainly I am not qualified, but I also don't think Charlie would be able to donate the time to prepare a motor for that or like the resources required to cast. The time is not as hard as the facility. I don't have a mixing facility right now, so I need to have a garage with a 40-quart mixer and several U-line fire cabinets worth of things. You mean your current living situation wouldn't support a yeah, I, I casting think, operation? I think the apartment complex may be justifiably frustrated if I attempt to work with significant quantities of class 1.4 materials. Yep. Um... Okay. John Bird, uh, once again, says $2 and says, Charlie Sheen. Thank you, John. I'm, I must say I'm even more confused now. Greg DeVille, with another 50. Joe, I wish to buy one of these mugs. Greg, I will, I will make it happen for you. And if you DM me on Twitter, I will give you a code to get one for free. Because that is too much money for a super chat. Um, J.R. Craft asks, Joe, how is the pillow? Great question. Charlie doesn't know about this. Uh oh. I feel like I feel like I'm in a danger zone. So earlier this year, I had a birthday, and I actually, believe it or not, I have a birthday coming up next year too. But um, <laughs> <laughs> such a stupid joke. And Jr. Craft has been following what I do for a long time, and he's been supporting like the whole way. Um, and one of his favorite moments is on a live stream, like. A year, maybe a little more than a year ago, I was soldering a sprite board, and the sprite board has that huge XT90 connector, Mm -hmm. right? And I soldered it backwards, and he's the person who put it in the chat to say it's backwards. And that requires so much solder and so much desoldering that I freaked out. And so he sent me this awesome pillow with the BPS logo on it for my birthday. It was super nice. Thank you so much, man. And the best part about it is it's just, it's this but then if you go real close in the top corner joe the xt90 is backwards <laughs> it's right there it's like that's it's hilarious. perfect that's that was echo tv5 right yeah you were at this launch i was at that launch it is actually it's likely that you took this picture too uh i did on my on my little <laughs> canon t6 man yeah, that's actually, a great picture. And you can see if you go to Charlie's channel, there's a there's it's still public, I think. The yep, video that is. From it. Um, okay. Anyway, we should time that ham. Hey Siri, set a timer for ten minutes. Okay, ten. Okay, so after ten minutes, we'll put on the first glaze. Right. So we have to make the glaze. True. How do we do that? I was hoping that you knew, 
But I figure we need some type of water and then brown sugar. And honey and maple syrup. Okay, I can get those out. I have honey, I think I have... All right, this is, this is science right here. This is, this is peak aerospace engineer energy right here. Um, it's not rocket science, so clearly I can become an expert in blazes by Googling how to make ham blaze. Um, and then I have maple syrup here. Nice maple syrup. Oh, Honey brown go. sugar glazed ham. The mug is starting to change color. You can see it going down. That's good. It means the odds of me burning myself on the mug are somewhat <laughs> less. Um, okay. Oh, and then Arsenio says, if you haven't seen it, you have to watch this classic. Oh no. I clicked on it and it took me away from the streaming thing. Arsenio, I may have to click later. We are sort of in ham land right now. Somewhat, somewhat ham land. Okay, uh, sounds like we need, whoa, that's a lot. One cup of honey, half cup of brown sugar. We're gonna skip the ginger and mustard. Add some cinnamon. Mix the honey, brown sugar, and spices in a small bowl until well blended. Okay, how much honey? One cup. A cup? How much do we need? I'm just reading the instructions here. You know what I'm gonna do? We're gonna... We're half, gonna half recipe. Half recipe? Yeah, half recipe. So okay. a half cup. I'm not gonna measure it, because that seems like <laughs> too much. And if I just... Sure, eyeball it. I, I buy it. Oh, that's not gonna work. Alright, hold on. What we need to do is go all the way. <laughs> do a little science. Yes! Honey is an amazing substance. It's also a great browser extension. Use code... <laughs> Sell out. <laughs> okay, so let's say I have enough honey. Now what? Uh, quarter cup of brown sugar. And that is the halved recipe? Yes. Okay, cool. I'm, I don't think that's enough honey, but I... That's so much, so let's, let's just see. Quarter cup of brown sugar. The chat is asking if we can cook the ham with hydrazine. Joe, what is your feeling on uh, hydrazine supplies? Uh, permission denied. <laughs> okay, let's say I have the brown sugar. Now what? We're eyeballing it today. The thing is, as cooks get better, they have to measure less. And ergo de facto, if you don't measure ever, you become an amazing cook very fast um what's next so i have cinnamon right uh yeah uh yes yeah. some quantity of cinnamon just like my eye and then mix well and then how much maple syrup uh to taste okay this honestly i mean it does seem like it would be hard to mess this up <laughs> he says this he just like drips a bunch of sugar all over the place I'm gonna use this. Mm. Wow. Let's get a let's get a zoom in on this. This is the content we're here for. You have subscribed to this channel for one reason and one reason only, and it's to see oh this looks awful. Hold on. It's to see this. <laughs> oh yeah! Look at that, glaze! That's definitely what's... You know what, dude? This kind of looks like glaze. I can get on board with this. <laughs> I'm serious, look at this! Yeah, yeah, absolutely! I feel like you could put a little lemon in here. I'm frankly surprised that worked as well as it did. We were really winging that. Very surprised. Chat wants you to carbonate it. Uh, I don't know that the soda stream will survive that event. <laughs> it survived the milk, but... Who knows? Okay, that's great. Uh, that worked way better than I thought. So now, when the 10-minute timer is up, um, we can put that glaze on. 
Let's do it. All right, the potatoes are actually cooking well. So we are making progress. We are recovering schedule. Yeah, no, we were in a, a much worse place before, and now things are looking up. Uh, we need to wrap bacon around green beans. BRB. All right, sure. As usual, I'll cook. I needed moisturizer. <laughs> My hands are getting dry. Okay, wrap the bacon around the green beans. We have to cook the bacon for that time, right? No. We wrap the bacon around the green beans and put it in the oven. Oh, that's a... Okay, that makes more sense now. We really, like, there wasn't a lot of planning that went into this. We just sort of knew the, the rough concepts we wanted to execute. And, like... Can you much, get aluminum foil on that, please? Yeah, much like the Christmas ham, um, we sort of... That was the extent of the planning. What's everyone else cooking tonight? Yeah, we're, we're putting together our, our high-speed train wreck of a, of a meal, but but are other people eating interesting things as well? Yeah, let's, let's hear it. Because it was actually really hard to come up with an idea for this. Like, we spent, like, way too long brainstorming it. <laughs> we need future meal ideas. Here. In the kitchen, much like in the workshop, the quality of your work is reflected on whether you clean as you go or you clean at the end. This is a true statement. Does BPS have a FOD control spec? Uh, not an official spec, but the FOD is. <laughs> so in aerospace engineering, uh, FOD or foreign object damage is a frequent concern and the way we deal with it is we have cleaning specifications for some parts that can be cleaned after you make them, some parts that have to be cleaned as you work on them, and some parts that have to be assembled and made in very clean environments. And one of these is called clean as you go. So it's, it's a policy that like you can't let junk accumulate. Um, but you really have to think about this. Like Some parts, when you're machining them, even as you're cutting the metal, you have to have a plan for evacuating the chips of metal out of your part so that they can't build up uh, during the machining process because that could represent a risk to the rocket. Um, and Joe, I'm, I'm frankly, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. You could allow cardboard shavings to accumulate in your rockets as you make them. I, I, I thought more of you. I've so. had, I have had fog problems before, believe it or not. <clears throat> On one of the echo launches, there is, uh, like the super early echo launches, there was a, um, I don't think a wire technically counts as fog. If it's not supposed to be there, it's fog. It, was, it's not supposed to be in the location it was. FOD. Okay, so that's FOD. Yeah, so it jammed up the TVC mount. Yeah, that's yeah. that's FOD. Uh-huh. Um, I don't think I've had any other major ones. Yeah. All right. So next thing we have to do is we have to cut the bacon in half lengthwise. Awesome. I can do that. Okay. If I, I do that, you can your... handle some asparagus task, perhaps? Yeah, green bean. That's uh, right. We did not buy a spare yet. It would be nice to have, um, you know what would be really cool? Is if we could set up one of those multi-cam things and people could select which camera they Yo, wanted. that'd be nifty. I think we don't quite have the budget for that. I, I, don't, I don't even know if YouTube supports that. Actually, given the super chats, we definitely have the budget for that, but. Does, does YouTube let you do that? Um, I feel like Lab Padre has it set up for his, his like, Boca Chica stream. Cool. But I don't actually know if that's the case. And SpaceX, some old SpaceX streams, you can select between the mission audio and the, um, like, the I control. thought they just had multiple streams. I, it, it's possible, but I feel like I have seen it in the past where it's just one thing. I don't know. I could be making I'm, I'm pretty. I'm pretty bad. I just turn on the mission audio and, and do other things. And <laughs> I don't know. I, I attempt to extract from the, the the cadence of the audio exactly what the odds of the rocket launching are. Okay. Ooh, it's ham time. Is that the Oh, 
stop. Sorry. It's hamming time. <laughs> time to ham it up. Frankly, I'm disappointed that we can't use uh, Pitbull's Fireball more frequently during the stream because of copyright. Oh, we filmed the thing to put Fireball too, but we didn't. Honestly, it's probably better. It's probably better without without that. I got a copyright strike for silence in one of my videos. They like, I like before I even started, when I was just like rolling the logos. It's like this has been claimed, <laughs> and I'm like, what? Absolute nonsense. Okay, there we go. The Badlands over at YouTube copyright Mad identification. Dude, this uh, this bacon is disgusting, raw. I've never actually cooked bacon myself. There's a lot of things I've never done. Never cooked bacon by myself. Never cooked bacon with another person. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of stuff. <laughs> All right, you want it in half? Uh, so down. Oh, small. Okay, yeah. I got it. Yeah. So we've been playing a lot of Among Us, and I, I have to get better because, um, yeah, I have to be better at the video games we play. Oh, can you and take? Can you glaze the ham while you talk about this? Oh, uh, There's yes. There's a thing in here. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and then uh, you will have to find space for this, because I have some space here, but... Okay. We'll come back to the story in a second. Charlie's been playing lots of Among Us, and he wants to get better. Um, the ham is not particularly warm yet. That's okay. And it's, by not particularly warm, I mean like, it's actually cool to the touch on the outside. Should we up the temperature? When was the last time we checked the temperature that it should be at? Uh, I checked it when I was reading how to make the glaze. Okay. We may increase the baking time rather than the... That's okay, we can do that. What's the problem with waiting for a little Christmas ham? Oh man, can they see this? Uh, yes. Yeah, they can. Okay, this is this is satisfying. Oh, he's glazing the ham. You were correct. We did not, in fact, need a full cup of this. So a half a half of it was fine. <laughs> a half of a half of it probably would have been sufficient. <laughs> Feeling that fireball. That is that is my current state. Status. Fireball confirmed. Fireball loading is underway. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we'll save a little for the, the second and third base. Wow, days. you glazed that boy. This wow. man be glazed. <laughs> it didn't seem like there was a whole lot of value in economy given how much excess glaze we had. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Do you want to set a timer for 15 minutes? Yeah. Thank you. Hey Siri, set a timer for 15 minutes. Okay, your time. Thanks. Right, so so one of the one of the streamers I've been watching in my quest to get better is the very talented Hafu, uh, who who does among us streams and is, is quite clever in how she murders all of her friends. Uh, great role model. Um, but there's a video, I haven't watched it, but the algorithm has decided that I will eventually watch it because it keeps showing it to me. It, it's titled like, Hafu has never boiled water. And I just am like, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm fairly incompetent as far as, as a cook goes. I'm an okay, I'm okay at grilling, but like, but you have boiling, boiling, water. boiling water is like step, step zero of how to be a human. Like, it combines, like, fire and tools in the most basic way possible. Anyway, so, but but I empathize with the, with the problem of Joe attempting to, uh... There we go, <laughs> much sharper cut. Oh, alright, checking the chat real quick. Uh, let's see, uh, you have to cook it for X time by Y. Wait, yes, we're attempting to figure that out. Uh... The small ham put the glaze on right away. That ham was in fact glazed. The, the chat has lots of opinions about how I glazed the ham. Uh, tonight's drinking is sponsored by Delta 4 Ignition. I support that. This is this. Is, what? We have Delta 4 Ignition in our cups. Wait, do we? Fireball. Oh, 
Oh, that's great! Da, 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 da. <laughs> that's that's really good. Um, thanks for joining us, Tech for Kids. <laughs> Ian, apparently, other people in the chat know Hafu's baking stream. Okay, cool. Uh, which is which is I guess makes me feel a little better that understanding that. Uh, <laughs> Hi everyone. <laughs> Okay, uh, I think that's the end of chat having caught up to where we are. Speaking of videos uh, that the YouTube algorithm suggests, and then I, I'm like, I don't know, I'm not really interested in it, and the algorithm's like, no, you, you are. Will, you will watch this, yes. Um, that new video from Stuff Made Here about the impossible to pick lock, mm -hmm. like, uh, like, obviously, like, a great video in its own right, but he mentioned the lock-picking lawyer, and I have seen, I've heard tell of lockpicking lawyer before, and I just started watching his videos, and they're amazing. They're short. He is a genius. It is kind of horrifying to see that he can pick pretty much anything, but it's also amazing because it's like there's all this engineering that goes into trying to prevent lockpicking, and no system is 100% safe. I I would not take bets on him against stuff made here. That dude is smart, and his. His implementation was very clever. Yeah, it is. It um, is very clever. And the machining on that, holy cow, the machining on that is spectacular. It's actually really, really well done, and um, I'm jealous of his, his nice at-home Tormach. Have you seen the video where he, he drags it down the hill? Yes. Yeah. That, that gave, I was scared for him. <laughs> that was... This is a personal safety hazard. Uh, all right. Less, I, I don't care about his personal safety. I mean, I do. I do care about his personal safety. <laughs> Sorry, stuff made here. No, the machine tool. Oh, the humanity! Think of the machine tool. <laughs> okay, I have the bacon. Okay, so the step now is uh, we get the green beans, which I just washed, and we get another baking sheet. We put aluminum on it, which we already did. Yep. And then we do this somewhere a camera can see, and we like wrap. If you do this here, I will start to take care of the ham. And also, what of the mashed potatoes? Do they just kind of boil for a while? Yeah, they're like a good 20 minutes away from being being ready for milk and butter. Okay. So so step one, there's no camera over here. Uh, yeah, How will sorry. I get my attention fix? I can move it. <laughs> uh, we can put it on top of the mic. Well, there are a variety of options here. Essentially what we have to do is we have to like snap these in like pieces. I'm gonna try it. And then we get several of them. This is a car mount, um, so it's designed to go on a car and travel at high speed. I've driven down the highway at like 80 with this thing and an expensive camera on the front of my car, and it's awesome. It's all suction based, and it's just a really cool We toy. should have gotten one of those for, because Rocket Team did a bunch of deployment tests where we deploy parachutes out of the back of cars. Yeah. And that was actually a really good idea and like a very cost effective way to test the parachutes. But um, getting the camera set up was always an interesting. Okay, this is going to be how you say difficult. Um, there we go. Oh boy, all right. Joe, Hello! This, doing this bacon wrapping would be good practice for your uh, composite skills. Oh yeah, we were supposed to do composite stuff while Charlie was here, and then it did not happen. Well, mostly because I got here like three days late. Okay, now we need to get the dust off of this, which is appreciably not dusty. I yeah. I think that's that's a fod hazard for the food in the kitchen. Absolutely fod hazard. Um, I do not want your sketchy microwave chop dust in my food. That's uh, I, I share that sentiment with you. We are, in fact, the same in that regard. Okay, here we go. Boom, and then lock. Ugh. Boom, and then lock. So now, I can take this and point it to what Charlie is doing. Wow, this is a truly bizarre angle. Hey, that kind of works. Does that look decent? I can't tell from it's the screen. It's sort of upside down. Uh, <laughs> minor detail. Let's see, if I flip vertical, and then flip horizontal. 
as well. I should have just, okay, hold on. Let's flip vertical again and then rotate 180. That's great. That totally works. Hey, that's great. Okay, cool. Now we just have to be super careful of this HDMI cable that runs directly through the middle this of the kitchen. This green bean is a little sad. <laughs> I think it's, it's just going to, we're going to give it a dignified end in the trash can. While we uh, accomplish this, I'm going to read out some more chat stuff. So, um, let's see. What do we got going on in chat? Chat vibe check. Uh, one, two, one, two. Yeah, vibe check in the chat, please. I prefer seasoning, seasoning my food with microwave dust, says Ian Ross. <laughs> uh, John Bird. Oh, boy. <laughs> the John Bird saga only, uh, only becomes more odd. He says... He donates five dollars. Thank you, John. And then says the Charlie Street, the Charlie Sheen project involves twenty-eight stepper motors, four at mega three twenty-eights, controlled with an ESP eighty two sixty-six over RS eight uh, four eighty-five. It's an easy project. Stays on the ground. I'm not sure what's about to happen here, but like that many stepper motors can only be used for great great power. I'm not sure if it's for ill or, or ill or good, but but great power nonetheless. With great stepper motor comes great power. Is that how that quote goes? That's exactly how it is. Thanks, Uncle Ben. Um, so then someone says butter chicken. That sounds dangerous. We don't. Well, we don't have any butter chicken today. Oh, butter chicken next dish says. Oh, uh, that's, that's an idea. Like with some lemon, we could make. We could swing that. That'd be cool. I would really like to make um, chicken piccata too. I like that a lot. Composite overwrapped green bean vessels. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, Al, my side. Oh, then, that hurts. And then Joey Murphy oh. comes in. He comes in with the I can I can think of zero engineering scenarios for which four at mega three twenty eight is the right answer. <laughs> Joey, it's not about whether it's the right answer. It's about if it's the answer you can imagine. Here's Bo Jarnard, by the way, named by Joey Murphy. He's doing very well. He's absolutely thriving. I gave him a little stick to hang on to. Um, he's loving the winter light because the sun is low in the sky now, and so he gets a lot of direct sunlight, and he seems to really like that. He's got all this little, these little hairs, these little things coming off, but, yeah, he's thriving. It's a solid plant. It is a solid plant. Solid plant. As opposed to a gaseous plant, which is a slightly more rare variety. Yeah, it's harder to find those. Okay, what can I do to help the process here? Wow, that looks great, man. Right? It could be tasty. Yeah, that looks really good. Um, how long do we have till we baste the, the ham again? Um, I have five minutes, so okay. I can do some stuff. Um, okay, hold on. This needs to like, be honestly, if you just like pitched it on the, the green bean brigade, yeah. that's probably the best. Look at these green beans. <laughs> We have to figure out what temperature we're going to cook the green beans at and the rolls at, and then do that as soon as we take the hand off while the hand is setting. I got real zoomed in on those green beans. Check this out. Oh, wait, hold on. I just want to see how that looks in the stream. Is the internet continuing to be obnoxious? Well... We're definitely pushing a lot of video to the to the old series of tubes. What else? What do we end up streaming at? Um, I'm at seven thousand uh, bits per second. Is that what it is? Bits that's, per second. That's a lot of bits per second. At in in Colorado, I usually do four thousand, which is like barely enough to actually count as video. There, I zoomed way in on the creepies. <laughs> All right. Um, you do, you said you do four thousand. Yeah. In my old apartment, um, when I was paying for like super cheap internet, I used to do. You can get away with twelve hundred if you don't move around a lot. Oh. Yeah. 
Okay, three minutes. You want some help on these green beans? Yes. So please. let's get that okay. going. Here, why don't I take over, and then if you want to tend to mashed potatoes, or Are they, do they require tending? Actually, yeah, I'll take over, and then when the when the timer goes off, you can tend to the ham. Sure. Okay. So you snap the ends off the green beans, mm -hmm. just kind of to a likely suspect, so you don't have to eat the weird bits. Yeah. And then you find a piece of bacon that looks like a piece of bacon you want around those green beans. Mm -hmm. And you just kind of like hold the bundle together and just like apply some tension and. Uh, yeah. All right. Do the do the, do the thing. Yeah. So you're you're a human filament winder. <laughs> and then you just place them on the, the mat. They look really great. I think they're going to be kind of promising. The advantage of this is that by having clean hands again, I can go back to my drink. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you need to catch up. I'm uh, I'm kind of way ahead. I'm gonna lose that battle every time just <laughs> yeah. by like virtue of like personal volume. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Hang on. Sorry, I gotta like chug. <laughs> How tight do you try to get the wrap on this? I don't know. Bacon tight? Bacon tight. Oh wow. Is there, is there a spec for that? <laughs> yeah, it's between uh, it's between uh, four and eleven psi stress in the bacon. How many uh, how many newton meters of torque? Nah, that's just that's just uh, that's oh, wait. uh, I don't know. I can't do that math in my head. <laughs> A half a half mug of fireball is already enough of it. I don't need to do that math in my head. The fireball prop loading is well underway. Uh, all right, this is this is entertaining. All right, let's um. Honestly, this the potatoes are in pretty good shape. Oh, good. it's because we're not at like a gazillion feet of altitude. Okay. Oh, and you live at a gazillion feet of altitude. Yeah, I'm like, these are cooking so fast. <laughs> I'm like, this is this makes no sense. But it does make sense. Because your boy is, what, Nashville's at like 100, 200 meters of altitude? Like above sea level, I think? <laughs> After looking at a lot of GPS raw data, I'm pretty sure that's about the altitude that Nashville is. <laughs> you probably have a pretty good idea of... Of exactly what that is. So let's decant the the water here. Okay. And then we'll add milk and butter. The milk will be lactate milk, the same brand that I carbonated. That will be fine. From that fateful day. Kind of annoying to snap off the ends for these guys. Oh wow, this is gonna be great. This is going to be amazing. Uh, milk and butter. This is pretty ambitious. We're just gonna go like a whole plate of butter. A whole what? We're just gonna dump the butter in. Nice. It's gonna be great. And then uh, it's gonna be tasty. I will stop my timer momentarily. But and this is the right milk. That means it's time to glaze ye old Christmas holiday Toyota Thon ham. <laughs> Alright, well step one is going to be to fork the potatoes. It's not very nice. It. This is the last green bean clump, I think. Is that, are we, or what was our limiting reagent? Uh, the green beans. Ah, uh, we should have gotten a little more. Oh. That's okay. I grabbed a handful. Oh man, these are going to be like excellent mashed potatoes. Have you had these green bean things before? Green bean? Yeah, yes. I haven't. This is a great idea. It was one that I acquired from a fellow rocket team person. Nice. This this happened on a Thanksgiving where we also ate duck instead of turkey and drank Everclear because oh. that was a life choice. Oh. Um, 
You win some, you lose some. Indeed. Got got green beans wrapped in bacon. Uh, also drank Everclear. <laughs> also drank Everclear. That was that was Everclear that uh, you know what I'm not gonna tell that story on screen. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll make wiser life choices. All right. Well, I'm gonna populate the rest of this area with just some extra pieces of bacon because we have them. Seems like a valid hypothesis. Um, and then whenever they're ready to go in the oven, they seem good. So that's great. Let's get some trash. Okay. Um, that needs more stirring, but what it needs more importantly right now is ham action. Ham action. Oh boy. Oh. We have a ham development. Wait, hold on. Let me get the camera back there. Oh, all right. Yeah, that's a, that's a good good plan. The ham can wait. I I think rather the ham can't wait. Actually, that's that seems more accurate now that you say it. Um, let's go sit here, and we deal with the cable management very carefully. Okay, hold on. Oh, don't cook the cable. Well, mostly speaking of interesting, want to get speaking it in of interesting PVC fumes. Okay, hold on. What if we did this? This is usually when people put up the technical difficulties on the screen. <laughs> okay. There it is. That's a good mount. And then I'm going to take these, stash them right, into more. the cabinet. For sure. I think, you know what, I'm making an executive uh, call. I think we should increase this. Go up to 350? I would go to like 400. Uh, I think I'm much? worried about like burning the outside before we appreciably heat the interior. Okay, let's go I'm, to 350. I'm really unclear on what the thermal conductivity of ham is. Uh, I can't answer that for you, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Can someone go on MatWeb? <laughs> and pull up the aerospace standard ham material properties, please. Thank you. All right. Well, in lieu of having any any information on that, um, oh, can I save? Can I saran wrap the bacon and save it? Yeah. I think that's like a valid technique, right? That can contribute to breakfast tomorrow. Oh, I've got some of those cinnamon rolls that. I brought. That didn't work out very well. Um, that's true. Are they in your car? Yeah. I assume that means they're refrigerated. They pretty much are. I would. I would trust that. Okay, this ham is really truly glazed. Like there's there's not a lot of like potential glaze avenues. It may left. not be hot, but it is flavorful. <laughs> Uh, let's see what's going on in the chat here. All right, Ham's going back in the oven. Charlie, can you do your best Julia Child's cooking show impersonation? Uh, I could if I had ever seen anything Julia Child's did ever. I know who she is, um, but I have not had the privilege of watching any of her content. Nathan has an answer for you on the thermal conductivity of Ham. <laughs> ham has a thermal conductivity of 0 0.46 Watts <laughs> per meter Kelvin. How does that make you feel about the ham? It would make an absolutely garbage combustion chamber material. <laughs> Let me tell you that. <laughs> now, now I'm kind of like 
Is it bad? Yeah. Is it bad that I now feel like I want to try and make a combustion chamber out of a ham? Like that rocket would smell so good. This is like big, uh, uh, like locks locks hybrid energy. Yeah, big big rocketeer on Twitter energy <laughs> is I want to make a combustion chamber out of ham. I, I wonder if you could like freeze ham, like like liquid nitrogen freeze ham, mill the combustion chamber. <laughs> And then, like, braise on the jacket by using, like, honey and brown sugar. Do you have to mill it really slowly so it doesn't heat up the ham? Oh, certainly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or either that or you have to use liquid, liquid nitrogen as coolant and lubricant. Wow. Wow. So much to, to consider there. Yeah, this is a fascinating manufacturing engineering problem, guys. I, I, I think I might have to try it. I'm going to look up my own sources on how long ham should be cooked. I'm becoming a little concerned. Yeah, a little sus. How long? Pink, pink, a little sus. To cook uh, ham. Oh. Okay, that's the entire ham. It says two and a half to three hours. Right, right. But this is pre-cooked, so we only need to warm it through. No, that's what it says for pre-cooked. One fully cooked ham, boneless or bone in, about 10 pounds. Okay, this is not helpful. I need a half ham. This is the research process. It's a critical part of any project is, is doing your research before you start the project to make sure you know what you're doing. As an alternative, you can do the research during the project after you're in over your head. This research is characterized by more panic and, and uh, also has to happen a little more quickly as things are already moving apace. Here we see a Joe in his natural habitat as he attempts to complete in situ research during the uh, dynamic phase of a project. Dynamic ham, band name called it. Um, all right, well, other people seem to be settling on the thing that we have found, which is 10 to 15 minutes per pound until heated through. The problem is that it's not even heated on the outside. Maybe we model the ham as a homogeneous temperature. <laughs> um, does anyone understand the linearity of ham heat transfer? <laughs> is the oven hot? Like, maybe we're debugging the wrong problem. <laughs> the oven is definitely hot. Maybe we need to take the aluminum foil off? I, so that's what I think, but everyone says keep it on. I just like, it does seem to, uh, I would guess that it hinders the heating process. Uh, yes, it, it explicitly hinders the heating process. Okay, and then let's walk it through. The adverse effects of removing the foil is that we might burn the top of the ham. No, the adverse effect is that you dehydrate the ham and then it is dry. I would rather have dry ham that is hot than wet ham that is cold. <laughs> You know, actually, hearing you put it like that makes me feel very strongly that we should take the foil off. Let's do it. Let's take that foil off. I think, I think executive decision. That foil is coming off. Uh, Mr. Titacon says, William Osmond laser cutter ham. Oh, have you seen that? I haven't. Am he, I missing? Okay, so what he does is he slices. I don't know if he uses a 3D printing, printing slicer or what. Oh, this was such a mistake. Okay, hold on. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is going poorly. Uh, Charlie, can you open the waste basket? Aye, aye. Maybe that shouldn't I have think gone my there. fast footwork there was probably probably lost on the crowd, but... Shouldn't have gone uh, there hot, but... Um, yeah, he, he cuts... He takes a bust of Vin Diesel, and he cuts slices of ham, probably like 150 slices of ham total, with a laser cutter. And when you stack all the ham on one center line, like one center wooden stick, you create the bust of Vin Diesel with ham, and then you put bread on top of it, and it creates a Vin Diesel ham sandwich. It's it's really it's like the peak of pointless engineering. The the ideas that man has <laughs> will never cease to like like guys. I'm an engineer. I I I think long and hard about what work I put into my projects and the leaps of imagination necessary to go from laser cutter to bust of Vin Diesel in ham simply eludes me. The genius of the man is indescribable. Um, yeah. 
Um, okay, how are we doing on chat? What, what's, what's everyone doing? Is anyone cooking any ham? <laughs> we'll see. I don't know, there's lots of comments on how to cook the ham. I've never quite finished uh, mashing these. I'm gonna sort of clean up the kitchen a little bit. That's honestly fair. We're going to have the potatoes before we have the anything else. We need to get the, we may be doing two courses. We may be doing- Are you completed with yes. this device? We may, be, we may be doing ham and potatoes followed by green beans and- Charlie, beans. we can have a dessert ham. <laughs> the ham's gonna be done before the green beans though. Then we oh, have we should put the green beans. Can you check and see how long we cook the green beans for? And um, temperature. It, yeah. I know it's not the same temperature as the ham, although we just changed the ham temperature, so maybe they line up and we can serve the green beans now. Uh, what are these called? Green bean poppers? Green beans wrapped in bacon? Uh, is there a fancier name? Sure. Green beans in bacon. Yeah, we can totally put them in at the same time. Um, that was toasty. Toasty, toasty, toasty. Very toasty. No one's wrapping them. Okay, hold on. Wrapped in bacon. Bacon wrapped green beans. Yeah. That ordering of a birds will be more successful in your research. Green bean bundles! Okay, so. Ooh, that's the fireball right there. That is oh. the fireball. <laughs> fireball loading. Um, Alright, so cook time 15 minutes at. 400. That's fine. We're close enough. Maybe we actually go up to 400 on the ham? Let's do it! <laughs> Dehydrate <laughs> that <laughs> ham! The enthusiasm, the sheer enthusiasm of that response is incredible! Well, it's because I'm I'm so worried about this this poor ham. Um, hold on, let's get the... Somehow, I don't think the ham is happier with the higher temperature. Like, I don't think the ham is thriving at all. I don't know if the ham's like thriving state is like as a uncooked or as a cooked ham, but but in either case, it is definitely in the middle. We love this journey for the ham. <laughs> All right, so that needed that needs. Uh, do I have a timer going? Hey Siri, set a timer for twenty three minutes. It says twenty five. That's but... an oddly specific. Oh, I should choose me to do it. Hey Siri, can you please set a timer for twenty three minutes? Thanks so much. Uh, you're really helpful when I need timers. Okay, 23 minutes and counting. Awesome. That yeah. honestly may be the most I use a voice assistant, just like, hey, set a timer. Yeah, it's just, that's all I do it for. Um, mo what I really like doing, though, is giving her super long sentences and seeing if you can pick out the important information from them. You're just training their voice model. You're doing free work for Apple. It's it's fun free work though. We have a super chat from Mr. Uh, Tight Hanicon. Uh, on McMaster Car, you can buy a four by three foot plastic Ziploc bag. I don't know what I would need a four by three foot plastic Ziploc bag for, but like you could sous vide so many hams in that bad boy. <laughs> Think of the hams. Oh, the humanity! <laughs> Man, how many how many people stop watching the stream? Well, we're definitely we're slowly going down. <laughs> if we look at the chart here, analytics, we've been losing viewers ever since. Uh, ever since we started, we peaked at like one ninety one, and now we're we're probably going to end up around a hundred. Um, to the to the people out there sticking around, thank you greatly. Thank you so much. Um, and let's, one more time, shout out to everyone for helping fund the L3. We hit this in like the first 10 minutes of the stream. So, so the long short of it is that Joe has been procrastinating for far too long building his L3 rocket. And so my Christmas present to him was one rocket booster. Um, and now we're gonna make sure he builds the rest of the rocket. Do you want these potato shavings? No, I don't want the potato okay. shavings. It's a treat. No, not even as a treat. <laughs> In fact, that is that is whatever the opposite of a treat is. All right, I'm gonna wash these dishes so that we have less work later. That seems... What? Foresight? That's dangerously <laughs> foresightful of you. All right, that, I was going somewhere fun with that and that was you, a board. <laughs> you, you tried. I tried. You tried. 
you can really smell that ham now, though. The extra couple of degrees may have made a big difference. I'm gonna give it a, a quick peek. It seems to, to be doing all right. I mean, I think the worst thing You're is- You're caramelizing the honey, that's what it is. Oh, interesting. Well, we gotta cook the ham one way or another. Cook the ham. That's the rallying cry. All right, let's check the, check the list. Wrap the bacon, check. Rolls in oven. We need a roll. We have another We're gonna wrap. use the, gla use the glass the one. Well, it's too hot right now, but we can heat it later. Where'd the, where'd the glass pan go? It's in the, the drawer, the thing right there, I think. That is the smallest door in the biggest cabinet oh, I've ever seen. The oh, cabinet to door ratio is just absurd. It's like a secret Narnia thing. <laughs> she put a label on the cabinet that says Narnia. <laughs> secret Narnia cabinet. The Lion, the Witch, and that one kitchen cabinet. <laughs> so when I was driving down, I had the, had the, the tunes on loud. And it's, it's snowing as I drive across the back country roads of Tennessee. Yeah. Like, Google decided that the interstate highway was not for me. Um, I, it, I, as far as I can tell, there must have been some construction going on or something. So I'm like on this like dirt road, weaving back and forth across the high, like the interstate. <laughs> I must have driven over an overpass over the interstate like four times. But Google didn't put me back on the interstate. And, uh... And th this whole time it's like snowing like gently in my face as I'm yeah. driving a car. And it, it just like, and, and my, my Google playlist decided that then was the opportune moment for, for the Narnia soundtrack <laughs> to come on. And it was, it was highly, it was highly perfect. perfect. It was very magical. Except for the, you know, like being in the car for 12 hours part. Right, that was suboptimal. That was, yeah. I was, I was detecting a hint of, I bet that's probably not great for audio. What? Oh, this? Yeah. I'm sure it's bad. Um, sorry, everyone. Oh, there's going to be like two rolls left that you aren't going to fit on the pan. That's okay. You can keep those with you and eat the frozen rolls as a snack. <laughs> wow. Um, I got this new dish rack, and I kind of think it's worse quality than my old one. It's just not dirty. That's the that's the benefit. It's not dirty and like five years old. Germanium window for oven, so we can measure ham temperature without opening the door. I think that's a valid suggestion. Like get a wow. get a fancy fancy pants IR setup. Wait, I have a I have an IR thermometer. We could do it. Right, but there's a window there now, so it won't wow. interfere with the. Snapchat from Alpha Omega. Wow, Snapchat. Super chat. <laughs> Super chat from Alpha, Alpha Omega Rob 3. In order to moisturize the ham, you should lubricate it in the bacon grease. Which is actually kind of a good idea. Like, put yeah. strips of bacon over the ham. That's kind of OP. But that's like, that's like ham squared, right? Because isn't bacon just like it's ham just strips? It's pork all the way down. Yeah. And after that wonderful bit of insight into my brain, I'm going to finish this, this mug of... There he goes. I sort of detect that you were there a while ago. Yeah, I, I arrived at that point, and then I decided I'm not going to have another one for a, a hot minute. <laughs> have you completed your journey with this glaze? I, I think I think more? I think our paths diverge in the wood. Okay. Two glazes diverged in the wood. And I took the one with more ham. I really I really do hope someone does a, a supercut of all of the times we say ham. Ham, 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 <laughs> ham, 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 ham. There, that's that content right there. It must be hundreds, right? It must be hundreds by this point. So we have to lower the temperature in the oven to 350 before we put the, the rolls in. Yeah. Um, because that's what it says on the bag, and, and the bag is never wrong. It's, um, what's your name? Miss Sister something? Sister Schubert? Something Sister like Schubert. that? Yeah. Uh, 
We're about ready to eat, actually. Yeah? Yeah, we're however many minutes are left on the green beans. I mean, pending ham. Um, we have a problem. We need to turn the temperature down. Okay. We're burning the ham. <laughs> the quantity of smoke <laughs> uh, created from opening that door is is illegal. I'm going to get my thermometer. If you, if you couldn't tell, we just opened the oven door and, and there was a lot of smoke. And by a lot of smoke, I mean too much smoke for a ham to be cooking properly. Okay, <laughs> Ham's fine, that's good. Okay, so Eddie, Eddie Mercury says that we are okay on the ham. It was just the glaze caramelizing. Oh, that's good. That's good to know. But but this, the entire chat can see exactly how much smoke there was, which is which is bad bad news bears. Oh boy. All right, running on a battery there. We're good for a bit. Okay, sure. Um, we got potatoes. Ham's glazing. How long's left on the bacon wrapped widgets with the wudgets? Fourteen minutes. Oh. Which actually makes sense given the state of the bacon when you open it up. Okay, so we should get plates out. So you don't want any of this, right? No, I okay. don't want anything to do with any of that. <laughs> all right, so plates out. Um, if you look in that cabinet without taking all of the wires out carefully, um, there are place mats, and then I will get my live stream table that usually is used to broadcast rocket launches to patrons, and we will use that to eat on. All right, well, we're going to go with these glamorous place mats that are all sparkly, because I feel like... The dark ones? Yeah. Yeah, the dark ones are nice. There's nothing you can do to stop me. I, I wouldn't even try. <laughs> so for the chat, I optimistically brought my signal rocket from three years ago. Yeah, and Joe, and I, not, Joe and I were going to do a launch too. today, but we didn't. It's not even R2 though. You should. It, it's it's, it's like, raining. It's signal alpha. This is this is OG, OG signal. Is this the focus ring? Uh, yeah, the four, there we go. Ring is focus. Yeah, signal alpha. This is like the the very very first run of computers Joe did, which was very nice of him to send me one. And it's it's the one where. You, there's no Bluetooth. You configure it by taking out an SD card, changing a number, and then putting it back in. Every change must be made that way. It is punishing. Uh, you should check the focus because I messed with it. Oh, yeah. Let's see. I, I can't focus. As, as anyone who's ever watched any one of my videos knows, I can't focus cameras sober, let alone inebriated. <laughs> All right. I think we are good. Mr. TitanCon wants me to wants us to know that on eBay we can buy a seven kilogram pail of Crytox for twenty thousand dollars, which is honestly a steal. Like a twenty kilogram pail of Crytox, yeah. that's at least that's at least forty six thousand dollars if you get it on brand. Like that is that is fifty percent off right there. If you need Crytox and you trust eBay branded sellers, you should go for that. There's definitely smoke that comes out when you open it. Hopefully the temperatures decrease a little bit. You can you can see it. Yeah. In the in the air. There's a there's a pale pa pallor on the I can on feel the, the ham coming in the air tonight. Is that is that a song? That's Phil Collins, yeah. Alright. Well, should we do some space trivia? We can try. I have not we have nothing to do for like eleven minutes. Wow, has it only been three minutes? Jack is keeping people updated in the converging section here. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's an invitation for Among Us, but I, he, they think we're out. Yeah. Um, Sorry. Really, frankly, I, I, I think that's improbable. Um, Charlie is currently opening a package of yeasty rolls. Okay, so space trivia. Someone, I, if, if people put space trivia in the chat, I will ask Charlie. Charlie is very good at space trivia. And this is only going to lead to my embarrassment in this state, but I oh. will try. Okay, all right. Pe people feel, fr feel free to make fun of me for how far, the, how far the mighty have fallen. Okay, well, I will start, and then that will give some context to show that you are not that bad. 
ladies and gentlemen, I just want you to know that I once defeated the faculty of the MIT Aero Astro Department in a in a in a trivia match. <laughs> um, and and I will I will claim that as as my my potential for lost glory in this evening. All right, what are the what are the questions? Okay, Tom Mueller's last rocket before SpaceX. Tom Mueller's last rocket before SpaceX. He built a white fuming nitric acid uh, ethanol rocket that he flew at far uh, right before he joined SpaceX. Can Charlie name all twelve lunar landing astronauts in order? No. I, that's... Uh, I I can get Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. I think the next ones I can get are on fourteen. Um, that'll be uh, Charlie Duke, uh, Alan Shepard. Uh, uh, ooh, Gene Cernan, uh, he was on 17, uh, did Fred Hayes go back? I think Fred Hayes went back. No, Fred Hayes may not have sh flown again until shuttle. Um, no, I, I can't do all 12. But 11 of them were Eagle Scouts. People are asking how fast did SN8 impact the ground? Obviously, Charlie is not going to share uh, internal SpaceX information, but it I, also I sounds like... I haven't, been, I, haven't, I haven't worked for SpaceX in years, so I, I wouldn't know anyway. Um, and it also seems like that would be easy to reverse engineer from footage. Yeah, um, just do some photogrammetry. Can you name all the cosmonauts on Vostok? Vostok, not Voskhod. So, Yuri Gagarin? I guess. Voskhod is the two the two person. No, one. Voskhod is the two person one. Vostok only flew one person. I don't know if okay. it flew multiple times though. Maybe uh, Dennis Titov. Um. Oh, I know this. It was in a Scott Manley video recently. What part of Challenger continued to fly until the end of the space shuttle program? Scott Manley did a video where he mentioned it, and there was some part that they swapped out between Challenger and like yeah, Discovery. Was it, wasn't it the body flap on the, on the... Uh... It was the leading edge or something. Oh, the leading edge, okay. I thought, I thought it might have been the body flap. It could be, I don't know. But there was some part of it that continued to fly. Does, did chat tell us about we were right? Uh, I haven't been looking at <laughs> corrections. I'm gonna check on the ham. Yeah, body flap, hey, I got it. Nice. Oh, okay, sorry, I'm very excited about that. Um, Serial number eight impacted at 40.2 meters a second. So this is actually a relevant thing to talk about. So for your rocket, you need to get a parachute that is has your impact velocity around 10 meters a second or a little less. Mm -hmm. uh, people will have opinions about your impact velocity. Since So for those of you who don't know, when you try and get your level three certification with the National Association of Rocketry, you have to have a, um, a special member of the National Association of Rocketry, the AAA Association of Rocketry, to certify you and they review your entire build, uh, your rocket build, and they have to see documentation that you provide, and they have to sign off on all of your design choices. Um, I'm not a TAP, um, but uh, Joe will have to find one. Yes. In FAR. Yes, at some point. But I can sign the other half of your paperwork. Okay. So don't crash. I will try very hard not to, as it's like fine to crash. It was fine for me to crash up until like, like a year ago, and then it became less and less fine for me to crash as I increased the number of cameras and complexity. <laughs> <laughs> the the dollar the very quickly with rocket launches you you burn several hundred dollars of rocket motors like you're burning a hundred dollars of rocket motor a second, but but in a crash you can burn several thousand dollars of cameras in several milliseconds. Right. Uh, so the the dollar per second value changes rapidly in a crash. Um, I'm going to go to the bathroom. If you want to continue on space trivia, I'll be Sure, there. yeah. Can I name all BPS rockets? Whoa! Oh, uh, so there was, one and I'll come back there was Scout, Echo, Relay, Sprite, Sprint, Thump. Uh, there was the, the one with Fids. Um... The one with fins was called. Uh, I don't know, but it had fins, and we tested it in the wind tunnel. 
And uh, yeah, I think that's that's all the BPS. Oh, and then so sprint uh, recently, and then we're we're getting back to uh, to scout now. Uh, oh, and thrusty McThrust face, important rocket there. Can't forget that one. Okay, uh, let's see what else. Uh, what stage flown on the Saturn One still had derivatives flying to this day? Well, it has to be Centaur, right? It's not DCSS. Uh, it's not Falcon. Uh, IUS wasn't developed until later, so it has to, it has to be Centaur. Uh, hi, Matthew. We are making ham and mashed potatoes for a holiday dinner. Eddie, Eddie Mercury wants us to know that per the, uh, per the Centaur alignment chart, Delta Cryogenic second stage counts as a Centaur, and I'm not sure that's true. It does in fact use hydrogen and oxygen, but, but it, is, it is not in any way a Centaur derivative, even though it has a similar engine. How much would one Earth pound on Mars weigh? Rohan wants to know. Uh, the answer is about uh, about 0.3 pounds. There's there's an exact number, but that's that's approximately the correct answer. Um, Matthew wants to know what my favorite launch vehicle is. My favorite launch vehicle has to be Falcon, um, just just because I had the privilege of working on it. It's 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 very special to be able to see something that you worked on go to space. Michael Ding wants to, me to name all ESA rockets. Um, the ones that are actively flying are Soyuz and its derivatives uh, through International Launch Services. Uh, and then there's Vega, which is flying, for definitions, definitions of flying, which include its second stage blowing up fairly often. Um, there's Ariane. Uh, and then uh, there's some historic ones. There was one called Diamant, uh, Diamant, that was built by the French. That one flew a cat to space, actually. Um, yeah, rumor has it that the cat was rather unhappy upon landing. Uh, what other European rockets have there been? Um, there is... Well, European Black Arrow? I don't think you're. I don't think Black Arrow counts because you're because Black Arrow was specifically a UK development program. But I could be wrong. Okay, we'll see. Um, then Blue Streak would fall into that too. Yeah. Um, there was. There's something that Black Arrow and Blue Streak, and then there's one French one. Let's go ahead and put the roll. DMM. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. That's, that's what this. Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, so you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, it's the internet. You have to acknowledge that cats flew to space. Wow, okay. I kind of think we should pull the ham. Can we let's, check the temperature on the ham? Let's pull the ham. Uh, Alright, yeah. What is a good ham temperature? Does anyone know? I don't know, but it's a little jiggly. It is definitely jiggling. You put that in, and then we'll probe the ham. Probe the ham. That is looking like moderately dehydrated on the surface. Hey Siri, how hot should a ham be? I mean, I can already answer the question, hotter okay. than 100 degrees. I found this on the web for how hot should a ham be. Check it out. Wow, we're not doing a good job with this ham. But do we need to cook? We don't need to cook it. We just need to reheat it. Ham the... I mean, you know what we can also do? We can cut up it in, in, like, into slices and then just microwave it if it's not hot enough. <laughs> Honestly, a solid bite. I'm real 145. hungry. 145. All raw, fresh ham, and ready to eat ham, to 145. This needs to be 145, even if it's ready to eat. Okay, so maybe we should put the aluminum foil back on it and... Okay. And then just let it vibe? Yeah. <laughs> this poor ham! 
<laughs> oh, this is not going well. <laughs> the, the thermometer in the hand has become the new sword in the stone. Oh. I feel greatly empowered by the, the mitt. It's a very Darth Vader fist. It is a good mitt. At, at least it feels hot now. So that's, that's promising. Maybe um, we just need 2x the time. That bacon is smelling amazing. We ate. Well, you know what we can do? We can have the bacon as appetizers, and then we can have it. Right? Honestly, I'm taking this out. Let's do it. Yeah, that looks fine. That, looks that is done. Oh, uh, you want to get that table set up and I'll pull two plates? Mm -hmm. We're going to do this. Was that, the, was that the timer for the, for the ham? No, for the uh, bacon green beans. Oh, yes it was. That's right. So we just accurately predicted the time it would take. I love when I do that. Science. Okay. Uh. Next time I get the good, like, good idea to like drink like spike cider with like a I should have done two tongue. shots. We should have done one shot and then two ciders. <laughs> that was really the math. We really, we really went for it. Woo! I mean, we we owe we owe the stream decent entertainment. Yeah, that's true. Uh, let's see. Checking the chat. Uh, carbonized ham. That's a true fact. Carbonized. Uh, <laughs> no, Noah Hastings. I feel like I just wandered into a murder scene. As long as you're you're analyzing that we murdered this ham, and by murdered I mean we cooked it at a too low of a temperature and then too high of a temperature because we were impatient. Yeah, yes, you're correct. It's a murder scene. Uh, where can I find more info about the Dart Rocket? Dart. Um, I I would like if people had no info about the Dart Rocket because it, it was doomed from the start in like six different ways. Um, if only someone had known that. If only someone had known that, and then done the thing that only good teachers do, which is sometimes you let your student fail so that they can learn it for themselves. So Charlie was like, yeah, Joe, let's take this to the wind tunnel and see how it does. <laughs> All right, Charlie. And, and, I, I, and I was prepared. I had a spare piece of plywood so we could put extra fins on it when it didn't work. This is for you. Cheers. Thank Sir. You. This is our this is our palate cleanser. It's very dry. It's certainly cooked though. Mm, thank you. I approve. Did you ever fly dart? No. <laughs> Joe hangs his head in shame. Not even close. And um, the best part is that I made one time when I built it, I was like, we can probably fly by this weekend. Like Let's just gloss over all of the controls. So, so Joe built Dart while I was while I was still at MIT, and he was in fact glossing over the controls. And I said, you know what? Hey, bring it down down to MIT. We've got a wind tunnel, and we can test it. And so Joe brought it down, and he built a little gimbal rig for it, so it could it could sit in the wind tunnel and hang by itself. And we tried to test it, and it just like went down to the bottom corner of the of the. Uh, of the uh, gimbal and stayed there. Yep. And then we added fins and it actually looked pretty good. So in some of like the montage footage, you can see the, like it shows the front shot of the rocket with the fins working and it's like this really cool shot where the rocket seems to be stabilizing. And then you look back and there are fins that are doing almost all of the work. Well, I mean, yeah, you, you, you made a dynamically unstable rocket and your control loop wasn't tight enough to keep it stable. Right. That's not an untractable problem. You just have to have, like, your LQR filter could probably do it now. Yeah. It, it has to, and you just need, like, <clears throat> super fast actuators. There are a lot of requests for a dart video. I could do one in terms of, like, lessons learned. I've wanted to do one of, like, all of the things I've learned through my failures. Like, I did that fun video in the spring that was, like, all of my rockets that didn't work. And I provide like short, brief explanations, but I can, you know, a lot of the earliest stuff was just fault of me pushing too hard to launch because I needed to like, 
I just needed to like try and get lucky. That's how I felt about it for a while. Was mm-hmm. if I can just like get a little lucky, maybe it'll light at the right time. <laughs> so Joey Murphy wants to know what was different between STS-1 and STS-2 and the entire rest of the shuttle program. And I know the answer to this one. This is it's the white tank. Yeah, it's yeah. the white. They used to paint the external fuel tank. And it was like several hundred or thousand pounds? Several paint. hundred pounds, yeah. Almost a hundred pounds. That's plenty of weight. Um, okay. Let's well, the ham. Some food. Yeah, let's have some appetizers. So, I can slip the table. But... It will make it difficult to get around. That's fine. We're, we're already hosed. Let's just accept the table. We can duck under the table. So this is the live stream table for launches. And it's actually the second of these tables that I own because I brought one to... Hey, I own one of those. I brought one to uh, Naren one year. Uh-huh. No, NSL. And I left it in the hotel. <laughs> well done. Yep. I tell you what, this is actually smelling really tasty. Yeah? I am highly enthusiastic for this this whole adventure. Okay, we've got that. Oh, no, no, We need these first. Okay. There's dirt all over this table. Uh, yes, yeah, so let's get some stools. A little rocket juice flavoring as a treat. There you go. Gracias, mi amiga. And I can just slide this under. Science. Perfect. Okay, that's good. Let's get a nice plant and a candle. We should probably also switch back to like the, the main view. Oh, yeah. How many how many bacons do you want? Um, how many are there? There are plenty. There are six left. I'll take like three bacons. Uh, Charlie, whiskey caramel or slow burn? Uh, como se dice? That, you have to just pick one. No context. Uh, Slow Burn. Okay. Casey Musgraves has a great song called Slow Burn. And that's the candle. Oh, and here we go. Oh, Bo Jarner! Yes! You can join us. That's, that's picturesque. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's wonderful. This can go down a little bit. And. Ooh, hold on. Let's see. Is this too much? No, this is nice. This is nice. This looks really good. So let's get the um, the chat up. I guess we can look at chat on our phones. Um, and I'll leave. Oh, this. fancy. All right. Yeah. Chat on a phone. This feels like a novel innovation. Joe Barnard. Oh, yeah, you have to go find it now. All right, well, it's time. Hey, you're live. Who could have guessed? I'm live. Wow, look at that. Let's go. All of chat is now third wheeling. Oh, boy. 
there we Joe, go. Joe, I didn't, I didn't know your girlfriend was joining us tonight. Oh, jeez. <laughs> is it is Bo Jarner my girlfriend? <laughs> That's going to lead to some awkward conversations. <laughs> All right, well, let's give these appetizers a try. I'm down. Right. I'm very excited for this. Cheers. Salute. Salute. Oh, cool. Yep. I think this is blocking the light on my face. Yeah, this is very good. That was a win. Well, I think 9 out of 10 for me. The bacon wrapped green beans is tasty. I'm going to give this a uh, Mashed potatoes a try. Yep, yeah, I, think, I think this is at least a nine out of ten. I think there's an argument to be made for higher. Mm -hmm. That may just be because I'm starving. Mashed potatoes give me um, big wedding videographer vibes because usually, so at a wedding venue, and the people are like just dying to hear about this. At a wedding video venue you will get a like catering service or the wedding venue will like feature a kitchen and the kitchen like you can get all these fancy meals but they also make meals for the people who work the wedding so the band the staff the servers the uh wedding coordinator whoever um and the people who shoot videos and photos and it's always chicken a vegetable and mashed potatoes always almost every time and I kind of like that. This is really good. Well, this was a good Cooking with Joey B. Number four. We've done four this year. And hopefully we'll do more than four next year. Well, this one's not done yet. We've got a ham to pull out. Oh my is gosh. Is that ready? This poor ham. Good check it? I think we should give it like five more minutes. Five more minutes, okay. Yeah. I want to like really give it some time. This is delicious. Mm hmm Where did you have this idea? You just like have had these before? Uh yeah. It was a it was an idea from a fellow rocket teamer. Uh we did these for Thanksgiving uh in 20, 2018. It was an interesting Thanksgiving. We did duck and, and Oh the Everclear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we talked about this, I forgot. It was it was an adventure. Tasty. And I don't try a lot of new foods. I didn't even try the duck, so it was it was impressive I got talked into trying the, the bacon-wrapped green beans. Charlie and I are both, like, very picky with foods. And honestly, this meal works perfectly for, I think, both of us, right? Mm-hmm. Um, should we take some questions? Someone says, did you all do Tark? Nope. Neither did I. I would have liked to, though. I didn't even know it existed till high school, uh, till college. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same with me. I didn't know. Um, Jared says Joe Barnard want to bet. Huh? What do I want to bet with Jared? Mm hmm. That was like at least four seconds ago. My brain doesn't have yeah. to recall that long. You know what I realized the other day? It's that I don't necessarily have such a bad memory. It's just that all of my all of the things I say are in real time, and so that's why I don't remember when I get like interrupted or I lose my train of thought. It's just all real time. Mm -hmm. It's like your your RAM is is yeah. You're not writing anything to program memory. What are you most excited for coming up with BPS? The L3 is a big one. The landing stuff is a big one, because I'm pretty sure I can get it in the next few tries. Um, I have a bunch of tubes to test the, like, a secondary set of landing legs to get rid of the bounce on the grass. Um, and then the fix for the common filter is pretty easy. Um, it just requires a little bit more tuning. And, yeah, then 2021 is launcher one, and then a bunch of high power stuff. So that's exciting. Um... Oh, people are saying Jared is the worst with eating new foods. Um, 
How much delta V can you get from those beans? Not much. I don't think so. Yeah. The mass, the mass fraction is pretty low. Four shows in a year is something that's supposed to be, for something that's supposed to be monthly, is better than redacted that was supposed to be weekly. He means me. If you're calling really? out me, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> he could be calling out the landing model rocket series. That too. Uh huh. I think a lot of people who do YouTube videos mm -hmm. try to commit to something weekly, and weekly is much more difficult. The than it's algorithm much. loves weekly. The mm -hmm. algorithm just like. Gives you all of the special attention if you do a weekly thing. Yep. <laughs> How much ISP can you put in your mouth compared to Arca? Funny story. Arca has not blocked me on Twitter yet. Shame. I've definitely said a few things that would make me think that I should be, based on their past actions. Arca is, is very block happy. Do you know that... Do you know that I've been blocked by several SLS contractors? Oh, I know at least one of them. Yeah, the, the Amro Fab people. The they, people who machined one massive part, or no, one like raceway. Mild size, yeah, yeah, out of a out of billet aluminum, right? What a bad decision! There are so many ways to build a raceway. Like, like, ladies and gentlemen. I have built raceways. I have I am a manufacturing engineer with direct experience producing raceways. I know what is up with raceways. I'm not just making this stuff up. And so when I tell you that I cannot imagine a less effective way to build a raceway than machined billet, I really do mean it. Like there are so many ways to make raceways from the SpaceX composites approach to the bent sheet metal approach that other companies use to the Russian approach of just leave it open. There are there are so many ways you can build a raceway that are not that. All of which are better than all machining of which are down than from that. an entire block. Yeah. yeah. And like it wasn't even like a block that was close to net shape. It was just a giant block. Yep. And they showed it on video. Like proudly. Yeah, they're like, look what we made. I'm like, it's beautiful machining, but I need to talk to the design engineer on that part. Like, if I was a project manager for SLS, it would be like, come in here, come in here. We need to have a chat. So look, your analysis is beautiful. You did a great job with figuring out how this part needed to, to be put together to make it not break. But then, am I, am I reading this right? Did you just order it to be CNC machined over a six week interval on a, like, a giant mill? Like, hello? Go off. Woohoo! Anybody home? Anyway. All right. 100 degrees. 110. 120. 130. 135. This needs 10 more minutes. And then our ham will be ready. It is very, very nearly done. Chat is asking if you can bring the uh, thermometer forward. They want to know what, what the what the drawing in the background is. The drawing in the background is? The thermometer. Oh, yeah. One uh, quick moment here. Here, can you explain this? And then I'm going to put the pan back in. Sure. So this... Contrary to what Chat believes, is not a rocket. This is a thermometer. And I don't know why we chose a thermometer, but the idea was that the bar would raise slowly over the course of the live stream as we buy parts for Joe Barnard's level three certification rocket. The problem is, is that y'all are awesome. And we essentially had all the parts for Joe's rocket by the beginning of the stream. <laughs> Yeah, we explained what was going on, and people just sort of went for it. Yeah, but before we were done with the explanation, we already had all the parts purchased. So this is this is Joe Barnard's nose cone, a telemetrum to provide backup altimetry uh, and telemetry for Ava, 
Uh, a pyrotechnic piston to deploy the parachute. A parachute to be deployed by the pyrotechnic piston. A motor case to contain the rocket motor. And then the rocket motor itself, an N1100 to power his rocket towards towards uh, 25,000 feet. Towards up. Towards up, yep. It's got an 11-second burn. It's got a really cool thrust curve. It's a spectacular motor. I'm very excited to see it fly. I watched a couple of videos early today. It's a long burn. It's like... I mean, I think the, the coolest part of the burn is not necessarily seeing it from the ground, but I'm going to have a bunch of onboard cameras. And I think being able to see just constant thrust for like 11 seconds is awesome. Should be great. What? Well, it's a first for me. I've never... Uh, HPR motors don't burn that long. That's I mean, true, because they're all core burners. Yeah, have any uh, have any of your motors burned that long? Like that's that's gonna be like a burn duration for you too. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, the only things that burn that long are end burners at the small scale, and right. But that would be this is producing like a, a tenth of a metric ton of thrust. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. No, it's producing more than n eleven hundred. So it's. Oh yeah, you're right. So it's so producing, it's producing 100, 100 kilograms of thrust. So this mm -hmm. is this is really full send. It's going to be a cool rocket. I'm very excited about it. But I don't have a name. If you have suggestions, <laughs> I will not commit to anything in the chat. But suggestions are welcome. Dangerous territory, bud. Dangerous territory. These mashed potatoes are great. Thank you. Thrusty McMore thrust face. Apt, I would say apt name. Descriptive for sure. Well, we need that ham. We need that ham. We need that ham. Although frankly, I could keep, we should have made, we should have got more green This beans. could have been the meal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just grabbed a handful and I was like, this is probably enough. Launcher 3? No. Yeah, Launcher 3. Handboy Rocket Man. More Thrust for us. More Thrust are us. Name it Bread. Thrusty McMacklemore. Name it after a Kerbal. That would be fun. Valentina McThrusty Face? Could be. Mech, mech, thrusty mech jeb face. Just name it Bill. Bill, there's Bill Thurman. More booster, Clyde, Steve. Well, let's do more space trivia. I have nothing else to talk about now, so. And we're, we're just waiting on that ham. And those rolls. Oh, shit. The rolls are probably a little toasty. Uh-oh. They looked okay to me. I think the rolls are coming out. The ham is protecting the top, at least. Ooh, that's heavy. Oh. oh, no. Okay. You get this. Here, use this on the other side. Catastrophic failure. Well, the good news is that I can't eat the rolls anyway because I'm gluten free. So even if we only end up with half of them viable, <laughs> I wouldn't touch that. Oh gosh. All right. <laughs> it was it was smoking. There was there was only bad things in that thing's future. Well, narrowly avoided disaster. Woo! <laughs> All right, well, yeah, we have the rolls. Do you want to try one? No. Okay. I just want that ham. <laughs> I can't believe it didn't cook that well. Is it, should we have broiled it? Like, should, I'm trying to figure out what we did wrong with the ham. I do not know. I, I, this is beyond my comprehension. 325. 145. Right. 
someone has correctly rebranded Cooking with Joey B, Cooking Disasters with Joey B. It's, that's what it says in the title. It's a live culinary disaster. Um, half or whole cooked hams can be eaten chilled straight from the packaging. If you do wish to reheat a cooked ham, you want to heat it up to 140. I don't understand that. It seems binary. It, they, they seem to say you either can eat it fine we should have asked the woman. We were already in such deep territory with her, with the whole ham situation anyway. We should have been like, listen, can we eat this raw so that we know that we can just, we can just call it before it reaches the temperature? I do not know. Ham doneness. How to cooking tips. Here we go. When checking doneness, it can be accomplished in basically the same manner for whatever cooking method you were using. Uh, thermometer. So chat wants to know what I worked on when I worked on Falcon. I had two jobs at SpaceX. I worked on the launch engineering team at Cape Canaveral, where I did stage one refurbishment and stage two launch engineering, which was a ton of fun, but also absolutely bare minimum sleep. Um, and I, 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 had a, I had a ton of fun there. The second job I did was as a, a stage two manufacturing engineer and stage, stage five, sorry, Stage one, lane five, manufacturing engineer um, in Hawthorne, California. And that was also very fun. I did get more sleep at that job. Um, but I'm very excited now that I have the opportunity to go do propulsion engineering uh, at Agile Space Industries. That's, that's been a ton of fun, and I'm really enjoying the work that I get to do there. Um, I would enjoy going back to SpaceX someday, but, but someday in the future. I like what I'm doing now. I have um, a lot of um, design input. Um, that's possible at a smaller company compared to, say, SpaceX. I work for myself, but if BPS ever stops working, that's the same thing that I would look for, is a small place where I can have a lot of input because there's just, everyone wears several hats. Yeah. That's the most fun thing for me, is not being super specialized. It's, it's, hard, to, it's hard to work somewhere where everyone is the best at everything they do because you get pushed into an increasingly tiny niche where you are the absolute very best at one very specific thing. I have never felt confusion like I do for this ham. <laughs> um, all right, chat, gonna... chat has some suggestions on how to cook a ham. Yeah, so chat, listen, if you've ever eaten ham, just tell me what you think. Um, to cook a ham, place in the shallow dish half cup of water, wrap tightly with aluminum, slow cook. Well, right, but we've already, like, we're past that point. We just need to know, is it cool to eat it if it hasn't quite reached 145? And we're, like, pretty sure it came cooked. Yeah. So, Joe, chat wants you to go be the GNC lead at Orca. No. My answer is no. And... You shouldn't turn down opportunities like that publicly, but for ARCA, my answer is no. Sorry. Um, people think, yes, you can eat it. It's okay if it's pre-cooked. It just didn't say it was pre-cooked on the thing, so I was a little sketched out by well, it. Was it 145 now? We can just pull it and check it. It was at like 135. Let's check the package again. To be honest, I've not had enough mashed potatoes that I will not eat all that much ham. <laughs> like, we just don't need the ham anymore? <laughs> I just have to know. Here we go. This is disgusting. I have to know, Charlie. Here all we right, go. I will be right back. Let me, let me know what the verdict is. <laughs> okay. This is Boar's Head Maple Ham. Something equipment. Process on shared equipment. Keep refrigerated. Boar's head. Honey, maple glazed honey coat ham. I'm going to look it up. It's probably a thing that is sold 
in multiple places. And so if we can find it online, I can find out if it's cooked. Uh, boars, head, honey, glaze, oh, maple glazed, maple glazed, honey coat ham. Here we go. This is baked right in. It must be cooked. Why won't someone just tell me the obvious? Okay. I think... What was the, what was the answer? I, I have not yet reached one. Um, it's crazy. I just want someone to say, this is a cooked ham. I feel like the, 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 the solid answer is just to like pull it out and stick a, stick a, stick a thermometer in it. All right, let's do it. It should be ready. Even if it's already cooked, it should now be very ready, if not somewhat dry. Kind of terrible to clean. That is that that is caramelized. Yes, it is. Here we go. One twenty. One thirty. One forty. It won't go higher. It's going higher. 143. I think we should do it. Full send. Full send. I think it's a cooked ham, right? There's no way this was raw. Well, we can cut it open and, like, find out. Okay, let's cut it open. How do we do that? Cut it here we go. Can you? That's quite hot. Um, Let's just get this out of the way. There we go. Cool. Science. This ham. When in doubt, just push stuff over. Is that what you need? Uh, not really. You can have that back. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, though. That was really nice. Um, I will now deseat the ham. Chat wants you to use a hacksaw. I will not do that. <laughs> no hacksaw, guys. Sorry. The ham. Cool. <laughs> the ham has been dethroned. <laughs> okay. Now we will cut some pieces off <laughs> with the serrated knife. <laughs> this means I did not have it before we did this whole adventure. No. Nope. How does that look? Does it look like a ham? Yeah, and it feels warm. Okay, I say let's go for it. Smells good. I mean, they cut it. I don't know. I think it's probably fine. If I do that, should I cut it up and then we save it as cut up pieces? I feel like that's how it works with the ham. Okay, science, I agree. While Joe does that, uh, we're getting F's in the chat for a dethroned ham. Oh, sorry ham. This ham. Oh, you know that's a bread knife. What? I didn't even look at the knife you said it was a carving knife. That's definitely a bread knife. It is too late. I have committed to the bit. <laughs> so we were we were discussing this earlier in the in the evening, folks. I'm like, so we bought a ham. Joe, do you own a carving knife? And he goes, Yeah, yeah, I totally own a carving knife. 
And it's, it's, it's the meme where Joe holds up the carving knife and, and says, We have a carving knife at home. Holds Sir, up can the I offer knife. you a, a cut of this meat? Thank you. Please Sir, pick, pick whatever. If he, uh, if he cuts. Yeah, that one um, is the you may need to cut it down a little bit. Go ahead, this guy right here. We we're very generous at this restaurant, sorry. Thank you. You are welcome, sir. <laughs> this is uh, this is something else, man. <laughs> All right, I have a knife. I'll just use that knife. Let's eat our, our <laughs> holiday ham, Charlie. We did it. We made it. It is charred to smithereens. It's poorly prepared. Next time you say we're putting two shots of that glass, I'm I objecting. <laughs> you say, veto. All right. Here we go. Let me know when you're ready. Yeah, we'll, I... uh, we'll take this ham journey together. All right. May, may, this, may, may I love this journey for us. May Salud. The, may the ham be with you. I have a really big piece of ham. Pretty tasty. Mm-hmm. I have no objection to this. So, Vinfaz wants to know if they can get leaks. There's like one or two things to leak on, but they're not very active. So the I'm, I'm slow. I'm the slow one, guys. Tell Joe to yell at me more. And the, the factor here is that I have a day job where I build rocket engines. And then I have a night job where I build rocket engines. This is already a leak. So Charlie... Okay, yeah, never mind. But oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Charlie and I have a project that we are working on, and uh, it is difficult to... Well, Charlie has a day job. Exactly. So, it's difficult to find time. I should probably drop the, the video of the day job testing I'm allowed to share. Do you have one? Yeah. Have I seen that? Uh, it was on Twitter. Let's check real quick. Uh, Twitter. Tweeter. Honestly? Yeah. Tweeter, please. This is awful around the edges. This it's is super dry. chewy. Yeah. yeah. So we really needed like two or three hours for this ham. Yeah, we, we underestimated on that. <laughs> I mean, I can't, no, I don't think anyone can be blamed for this. Like, that's what it said, 15 minutes per thing. Per, it, it did say pound. that. Yeah. Does seem optimistic in hindsight. So one of these tweets is me sharing a video I was allowed to share from Agile Testing. I'm just going to scroll through my old Twitter. There's one that's like a mission duty cycle. That's my favorite one where you pulse it a bunch. Yeah. You know, maybe I can just pull it up on YouTube and, oh, it's going to complain because, okay, you know what I can do? I can go to my channel. Oh, and like the unlisted stuff? Yeah, something like that. That's all my public videos. Hi, please. There we go. Not that one. I can't show that one. I can't show that one. Uh, share. Copy link. I can't believe we, there's a hundred people choosing to watch this. They're just eating ham. <laughs> uh, no, please, please show the. Oh my gosh, guys! Just show me the video I was on previously. There we go. Okay, so I'm dropping a link in the chat. Is this the unlisted thing? Yes, yeah, so this is a video of us testing a rocket engine at my day job, and this is a rocket engine that does a thing for people um, that we did. We developed under internal research and testing, um, so it, it's it's really cool. It's a it's a ten pound thrust thruster, and it can pulse you know several dozen times a second, um, and it can produce you know less than a tenth of a newton per pulse, so it can do very precise steering. Okay, anyway, cool. but there's a video of it. We tested it. It like took us like uh, like three or four weeks just to like go from a clean sheet of paper to having this rocket engine running. So it was a really really exciting project. Um, 
it's always fun to like get programs where your goal is to do something as quickly as possible. That sounds like all BPS projects, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is. For it's, better or uh, sometimes for worse. Are you going to be able to use that fin can for your L3? There are rules prohibiting L3 certification with prefabricated fin cans. Um, it's a good question. I think the answer is you're allowed to use it. It depends on who your certifier is. Um, ultimately, it comes down to if you can justify why you went with that design. Um, if you can demonstrate that you um, have an appreciation of the construction and fabrication techniques needed to build level 3 rockets, ultimately what they're certifying you is your ability to assemble and safely use the motor. Um, and, and they're relying somewhat on your um, wise judgment to decide what airframe and uh, fabrication techniques you are comfortable with enough to build your rockets out of. Um, for example, it would be uh, foolish for me to go build a rocket out of a honeycomb core structure, even though I'm L3, um, because I have, no, I have no experience with that personally. But um, if I wanted to go weld up uh, a fin can um, that would be something I have great experience with. So, you know, it, the certification process is, is sort of a your mileage may vary and, and find, a, find a certifier who will work with you to do what you're trying to do. I love that Nightbot is just posting my Twitter account there. Thanks, Nightbot. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. This was a real chunk of ham. I should have gotten a smaller chunk of ham. Can't wait to tell my future son that I was around when two rocket builders streamed then streamed themselves failing at cooking dinner. I'm just kidding. Love y'all channels. Thanks, Matthew. Is this failing at cooking? Like, I, I feel like this was highly successful. We ate all of those green beans. We unintentionally spa oh we did eat all the green beans, didn't we? Uh, we unintentionally spaced out a multi-course meal. That's exactly what happened. I, you know, the mashed potatoes were delicious. The green beans were excellent. Mm -hmm. The rolls were an unmitigated catastrophe. That just I think that that started it, as a bad idea. And I think the ham is good, and I wouldn't be disappointed in the ham had it not been such a journey to get to this place <laughs> like, with the ham. <laughs> we may as well have walked the ham to Moria. Yeah, I, it's the ham... Mordor, wow. Whew. The ham is... Uh, there's just too much baggage with the ham, you know? I think that's what it is for me. There's too much baggage. It is quite good, though. Did we eat any of the rolls? No. After I dumped the rolls on the floor of the oven, I did not eat any of the rolls. Oh, well. You live and you learn, right? You know, what can you say? Let's do a few more questions, and then I think we'll probably call it. Um, I need to get to YouTube. Here we go. Okay. Can you modulate the pulsing on those engines from Agile to play music on them? Yes. And and comment. <laughs> okay. Scout E, flight when? Uh, January, probably. Um, I just, like, was close to burning out when that first flight happened, and so I switched gears intentionally, and that's that. Uh, how did you expect to control the rolls without a reaction wheel? On what? The rolls. Thank you, Joey. <laughs> I tap out. How far uh, could the potential energy from your ham make a rocket fly? I don't think very far. What is the occasion that brings Charlie to you, Joey? Charlie is on secret business. <laughs> uh, let's see, what else? Ham. Just a comment, just ham. Joey is one sexy beast. Uh, thanks. I'll, I'll let you handle that one. 
Ham is the occasion. All right. Well, it feels like we've sort of devolved into uh, ham chat. So, in lieu of anything better to talk about, are we all done? I think we're all done. I think we're done. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for joining. And uh, this was so much fun. This was. I'm, I'm always fun to hang out with people. We've been live for like two hours and forty five minutes. I think. That's, uh, not, that's about how long these things take. Yeah. So thanks for hanging around for the uh, ye old ham fest, and we'll see you again in like a quarter of a year. <laughs> All right, bye everyone. Now I gotta turn it off. Here we go.